Hi guys, how you doing? I'm here with Luxia. He just won his first match of Ascension. Congratulations, parabéns. And the first question that I want to ask him is, uh, is the first uh, match that they can win here in Ascension. What was missing from them as a team to just close the first map? É, então, é, o que estava faltando para vocês conseguir fechar um jogo? A gente estava muito nervoso, tipo, estava faltando mais calma, eu acho, tipo, não só na mira, assim, nas decisões e tudo mais, assim. We were really, really nervous and we had to keep calm in our decisions too and yeah, that was costing us the game. The second question that I want to ask him is that they need to win against Reta and uh, like to have chance, chances of playoffs. And uh, what is their opinion about this team and how are they preparing for this team? Então, vocês precisam ganhar da reta para conseguir ter uma chance para entrar nos playoffs. O que, que vocês acham deles como time e como vocês estão se preparando? Eles são um time muito forte, a gente vem se preparando normalmente, igual como todos os times, porém a gente tem que ter uma cautela a mais por causa da Alp do Snow. So, uh, they are really, really good, we're just going to prepare the same, but we need to be precautious with Snow Sin and his operator. The last question that I want to ask him is, what could we expect from Galoris if they uh, get into playoffs? Então, o que, que a gente poderia esperar de vocês como time se vocês conseguem entrar nos playoffs? Um time mais resiliente e mais calmo nas horas de fechar o mapa, principalmente. Um time com muita garra, né, que tá vindo de baixo. Yeah, really calm team and also with a lot of claws, you know, that it's coming from below. And yeah, they just want to win. Muito obrigada. Thank you. Just say, you can stay here because we have our next match, TSM against M80. Thank you, guys. They say in life... There are no guarantees. Hmm. They say a lot of stuff like that. Slow it down. Play it safe. Hedge your bets. So what? You gonna listen to that? You gonna stop because they can't guarantee you'll pull this off? No guarantee you'll win? No guarantee everything's gonna be fine? your own guarantees. Nobody else will light your way. Start your own fire and keep it burning. And we guarantee you'll have one hell of a lifetime.
I'm dinner with uh, Elon Musk. Probably, I would say my gra my grandparents. Can be dead or use <laughs> people alive. I think Michael Jordan because I saw one document, The Last Dance. I l I learned a lot of that. I I. It's a domestic rematch for M80 and TSM, and it might just be their most important matchup ever. M80, sitting at 3-0 in the group stage thus far, have a chance to lock themselves in for playoffs with a win in this matchup. While they have had extremely close contests thus far, they are the only remaining team without a loss in the group stage. They have another chance to prove themselves as any challenger's best and solidify their spot at the top of the totem pole here at Ascension. For TSM, the situation is quite dire, as they sit at 1-2, and two, and a loss here could mean that they miss out on the playoffs. It's already a tough spot to be in, made worse by the fact that M80 is a historically difficult opponent for TSM. In the team's four domestic matchups this season, TSM went 0-4 against M80 and only managed a single map win. Although some maps were very close, it's going to take a lot for TSM to overcome a team that has seemingly always had their number. Uh, I think we're pretty disappointed with uh, the Reta and uh, uh, 2G loss so far. There's not like other ways to say it. Uh, we're disappointed and we uh, would love to play these games again and win it. I think we do very, uh, like the most of the mistakes we made are fundamentals and like very small mistakes that we've been working on throughout the year. But when the pressure is high, it seems like it, uh, those issues come back. Come back. So, I mean, we know we know how good they are. Uh, they know how good we are. Uh, it's gonna be a battle, obviously, and they know that. And we just need to face the little mistakes that we keep making, the fundamentals, and just play more confidence, with more confidence, and not let the pressure get to us. Uh, obviously, we've been working hard the whole year. So basically, again, it's just been working out the whole year. Uh, we know what to expect in this tournament. Uh, we've been here last year, so again, it's pretty much just preparation the whole year, preparing for this moment, and we just have to execute it. There's a lot of room for improvement. Uh, I think right now we're playing a 5 out of 10, and when we're going to be playing a 10 out of 10, uh, even an 8 out of 10, I don't think anyone's going to stand a chance. So, uh, I have no message for them. They basically know what we're, what we're capable of. We've played these guys in the last two years. They haven't beat us. Uh, we know what it takes to beat them, and uh, again, it's going to be a good matchup. This is for NA, so... Looking forward to playing them on land, finally. Uh, I think experience. I think experience is something I have over him. Uh, I think generally he did improve a lot compared to last season, and I'll give it to him. Uh, but I think experience is the number one thing. I have a lot of experience playing with flash initiators, and I think he's new on the role, so I would say experience. It is time for our last regional matchup of the day and the last regional matchup of this group stage. Welcome back, everybody, to VCT Ascension Americas. It's time for M80 to take down TSM, and we got to hear a little bit on the teaser, but it's an M80 that has always had domination going against TSM. Only in this year, it's been four times that M80 have played TSM, and every single time they've won against them, but overall, it's even six times since 2023 that they played against each other, and Roy, M80, like we said before, they have their number. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the stats show it. Every all the trends show it. M80 has defeated TSM every single time, and this is this might be the worst time for this. But I mean, the fact that the over you know the number one seeds have been winning every single match, I, I have a feeling the trend might continue here. <laughs> It's a, it's a, that's a fair guess. Just with the way that Amity has been performing, even looking at the history, looking at the grand finals, and looking at their shape right now, Emily, it's just a team that is so strong. And yes, they're not perfect. It's not like those maps they're always dominating. But what really lets them go across the line is that they know how to close them out. They know how to solve those tricky and difficult situations. Yes, sometimes it's uh, kind of an advantage in a way, in a silly way, to not be performing your absolute best early on because you have to make mistakes and lose certain rounds in order to perfect it and make it even better. If they were constantly dominating all of their matches, they would have nothing to work on. So True. in a way, if we look at it that way, it could work in M80's favor to get even stronger throughout the tournament. And looking at 
their group matches that they've had so far a lot of the matches were super close but they're still three and oh so to me i feel like we're gonna see a much looser uh gameplay for them because they really can play loose and just give an opportunity to test things and do trial and error today they've they haven't been losing these matches but they have been losing a couple of the maps here and there and like you said that losing those maps has been it seems like great experience mm -hmm. for them to learn how to deal with it uh and one of the things that we saw it was a little bit of social media talking here between xander and koala roy yeah absolutely there's been some tweets from the players specifically the one we're about to show right here um this one obviously is it doesn't really say much but it does speak on the fact that the you know i mean has won all their matches but their individual form hasn't really been to expectation like they haven't been playing to the same level i mean even nismo said it in the video and i agree with him individually on a, on a pure individual level they have not been their best they, yes they are they are looking great strategically they're looking great as a team and you can tell that the strategic depth is just a little bit better than tsm's but on the other hand tsm has been playing well on an individual level and i think if tsm really want a shot here between these two matches i think that tsm is going to have to step up massively individually including seven and then they're going to have to out brawl m80 because i don't think they can match them on a strategic level how scary is it that even M80 and even the M80 players are talking about not playing their best, not playing to their 100%, and yet they're still, they're winning. still <laughs> winning these matches. They're still the one and only undefeated team. They are the favorites to win Ascension for a reason, Emily. But let's talk about the other side because TSM, they've had some great fights. They've had some great moments. And this, it will be the first time that they play against M80 on land. So that could also play a part into how this match is going to play out. Oh yeah, LAN environment is always 10 times better. It's more of an equal playing field. Everybody's playing on the same equipment and the same ping. And also a bonus of you can get even more into your opponent's head at LAN. TSM has a little bit more pressure today, in my opinion, because they have to get more wins on their record for the groups to kind of secure their uh, chance in the playoffs. But also because this is a revenge match, they want to finally get that win versus M80. And as we're seeing all of these amazing highlights, TSM has been playing pretty well so far, in my opinion, throughout the groups. And I think they continue to get better because the chemistry on LAN is just so much better to build and play off of and just improve as a team. And we've been seeing a lot of people shine, particularly like a proto, getting these really nice clutches, even on Killjoy and Deadlock. And even Sim is a player who we're going to have to look out for today because he's been pretty consistent as well. The, the players individually have always been there and have been able to show up, especially because we got the, the, to see throughout the whole year how this TSM team was improving and getting better and now being at this instant. But it seems like they're also missing a little bit of what I maybe we're talking about, Roy, where all the pieces are finally working together, synergized, coordinated, and being able to win these maps that way. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if we're talking about TSM, I mean, look at, look at their match performances. They won their opening game versus Galoris, and then they kind of had a really rough match against Retta. Uh, in my opinion, that, that match was a little bit scary. And then they tried to bounce back versus 2G, and they did end up getting, uh, you know, losing in a really, really tight knit game. But yeah, to, to go back on the point, I, I definitely think that, again, strategically, M80 is just the clear dominant team for that in that regard. Like, they, they their strategy, their map pool, their flexibility is just unmatched, in my opinion. And it, they're really just winning off of that. So, it, again, to me, my, my whole point being is that I kind of agree with with M when she was talking about individual form and, and these players popping off because on like, you know, on a very fundamental level, on a very micro level, TSM has been playing kind of well. They know how to team fight. They know how to set up Sim. They're, they're not really yeah. missing that part of their gameplay. And that's the part that they need to double down on. They need to disrupt M80. Don't let them run the retakes. Don't let them run their execs. Dismantle their defaults. Like don't, don't allow them room to just like make calculated game plans because you won't be able to match them on that level. I really don't believe. And M80, although they're all undefeated, they've played a lot of rounds so far in this tournament. So that's something that TSM has had the opportunity to study and, and see how they can take an advantage. And this is something that we talked about as well. Only on this year, they face each other four times and every single time has gone the way of M80. And in the overall history between the two, it's been six times that they played each other. And M80 has also won those last two from 2023. So the... the, the, the 
I, I don't even know how to describe it. It just <laughs> control domination reads. Uh, it's pretty much to perfection of what M80 has been able to do against TSM, Roy. Right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I don't know how much more we can continue talking about this point. M80 is a good team. Woo! TSM is also a really good team. <laughs> this is their chance to kind of prove that. Um, I think that, again, this, again, this is one thing that we haven't really touched on is is kind of the mental but i do also want to start moving the conversation towards what we're going to be expecting from this matchup and that is going to be the duelist differential between kawala and sim and they play very different i mean we've seen koala noob on so many different agents since challengers he was doing this not only on the duelers role but when he has to flex and play something else he's more than comfortable to do so and bring the different play styles while emily on the same side you have that sim that is pretty much the only the duel is always every single time going in and being the difference maker for tsm Mm -hmm. This is a, a duelist match that I'm really looking forward to watching. I think this is a head-to-head -head battle that we can all look look forward to seeing. Both Sim and Koala Noob have been consistently at the top for their team. And also, as we can see with the stats, Sim has been going in a little bit more than Koala Noob in terms of trying to get the first bloods. I think that's why the percentage is higher for Sim. But Koala Noob on the other side has a higher uh, KDA of 1.7. Mm -hmm. So both of these players going head to head, I think it's pretty even in terms of that. Koala Noob has been playing a really fun agent, Yoru, which I hope we get to see today yeah. as well because that's not an easy agent to play at all. You really have to preemptively think what you're going to do. But Sim is also just really good of, of wanting to get that ground or that first opener and is very successful on doing that. Yeah, and then the final kind of final point on the duel is head-to-head -head as well is like, yeah, Koala might have not, he's not winning as many first kills, but he's also, his first death percentages are also lower than Sim. So Sim might be taking more for first fights, but Koala is likely to survive them. So, I mean, there's that aspect of it. But I do also want to touch on the fact that M80 has been the sort of kind of team that likes to hide their map pool, right? So they they are going to be coming out in this into this matchup with virtually no, no secrets. The, the map pool is essentially shown. And let's talk about, I mean, we already talked about the duelist, now let's talk about the other side. Let's talk about the IGLs here, and, then, and let's talk about Xander and GMD specifically. Xander has been popping off, and we mention it every single time, because every single map he's doing these things where he's clutching rounds, he's closing rounds, he's having such a read on the enemy team, and that's not easy to do in this tournament. You're going against all these different regions, all these different playstyles, Roy, and it's uh, something that is great to see for both of the teams, but honestly, especially Xander. Yeah, especially Xander. I mean, the statistics, they're not that significantly different between these two, but Xander is taken on in a completely different weight. But uh, GMD does I, does mid-round, excuse me, for the TSM side, so he does have some responsibility and and some agency in, ter in terms of how TSM plays out their mid-rounds. But uh, the main point being is that they have really strong duelists, and again, they have very strong closers, people that can step up. 40% clutch rate for a controller IGL is unheard of. That is <laughs> unheard of those are insane stats it's, it's just unreal what these players have been able to do but this is the zippo agent select that we're looking at right now emily and we have the first two maps are going to be sunset icebox and to close it out it's going to be haven what do you make of this okay uh sunset was a match that they actually played in the grand finals for north america uh where m81 13 8 so this is a good pick for them because a lot of the rounds went down to individuality and, and mid-round decisions, so that's an easy fix for TSM. Um, also, one thing to note is TSM had a really bad attacking side on Sunset, so the fact that they're going to be starting on attack again, it's going to be a good opportunity for a revenge versus that last match very interested on this map of sunset and to figure out what we're gonna be seeing on the screen let's jump into the black light agent select as well on sunset both of the teams tsm lost at 11 13 to two game and m80 lost at 11 13 to galore so both of them losing to the brazilian teams roy yeah absolutely and i mean uh, just a reminder that the last time m80 played sunset they did lose on that map so the, their yoru was not working as intended and maybe it was just some sort of dysfunction with the way they were approaching it but to be fair a lot of the rounds came down to some weird kind of like type a coin flip situations and they just did not win those scenarios but strategically again they were playing well but now tsm is going to be in a, in a pretty good position to sort of combat and replicate the success that this team's had against m80 on sunset specifically 
There's some big essay listic differences between TSM and M80. So there's a good chance to see how this is all gonna play out. Emily, any last thoughts on this? I'm ready. Bring on the battle. Let's get the Neon versus the Yoru and let's see how they battle it out. I think this is gonna be so fun to watch. Well, let's find out who's gonna get the win. Is it gonna be M80 continuing their dominance against TSM or TSM has a statement to make on this map number one? And we'll throw it to your casters, Stenrek and Kek. Ooh, you feel that? The goosebumps, the chills rising. I have been waiting for this matchup for so long. The Koala Nubioru, the Sim Neon. Emily's completely right. We've seen this matchup before. And let me tell you, the individuality was important. But the early rounds too, that defensive side where Koala would just brazenly take over the whole map and shut down Sim round after round. It's been a long growth arc for TSM since then, even if it hasn't felt that long. This is the moment for TSM to shine. They have a very long road ahead of themselves. And they want to have a chance to qualify for the group for the playoffs of Ascension. And it starts with defeating the most undefeatable team we've seen so far this tournament. The opening half of the window that TSM has to playoffs is going to close if they don't lock it in starting here on this attacking side of Sunset, which they lit up against two game earlier in this tournament. But again, like the desk said, it's been notoriously weaker than other teams. And with M80's ability to go into hero mode and have individual players sweep up positions and get so much value out of it, it means that these low buy rounds Koala. initially are so scary. Koala Noob takes all the space he wants and goes right back to B site where M80 can sit pretty safe. 5v now four. GMD hopeful flank watch, but Koala Noob is staying put. M80 so disciplined right now. Already revealed where TSM are opting to put the majority of their forces back over on A. Crossfire set up a great, oh, a great piece of utility early on. Seven okay. takes revenge though. Nismo does end up removing that gecko. Only a paranoia available here right to push there. onto site. A 3v3 BCJ blind through the smoke has a flash of his own. This is good, left. but look at Qualanoom. Still yet another flash. Whatever you can do to blind these Planted. pistols against each other. The bench now taking the lead. It's up to one left. GMD. Good for two. The 1v1 already. Individuality is the key of this matchup, huh? What a better way to prove it, but now BCJ taking a very close round one. Well met is TSM by M80's initiation, and BCJ doing it in two phases like a gecko gotta do. Well taken, and in the beginning, it all starts with Koala Noob getting brazen, taking that space, doing what M80 can that TSM hasn't this tournament, and that's why they're 3 0. That's why TSM's 1 2. That's why this is desperation time for them, and why M80, uh, this is debatably the the least important match of the tournament. What is initially the biggest North American match of the year has turned into a backyard brawl in lieu of the Latin American and Brazilian teams that have swept up this tournament. Yeah, I was really curious to see what M80 would end up doing in terms of their map picks, their agent selection, their technical pauses, whatever would come through <laughs> first, right? And we, we, we've seen the whole gambit from M80, and we've talked about how much they love to alter and play around with the meta to their liking. And this is a, t uh, a common matchup that we've seen before, at least for the agent select, right? We saw that Yoru, we've seen the breach, of course, on Sunset, <laughs> but the duality of having those two play that defensive side, there would be many, many rounds where Sim would begin to get something going just for an outlaw in the face from Koala in the middle of mid. And guess what? That was because of a stun from Nismo all the way in the back of A-Site. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. This is a scary defense, dude. Yeah, you talk about kills, Nismo is going to get involved. By far the most common assister of the tournament so far. M80, when it comes to team play, Nismo is the glue that binds it together. And so much of it is because of his breach. Not just on Sunset, but a couple of the other maps that he's been able to play it on so proficiently. But here, on the defense, when Koala Noob is able to get proactive like this, especially against a Sim that doesn't have the wherewithal or guns for that matter to be able to stretch his wings like he so desperately wants to oh yeah nismo feels good from a nope. distance from any distance 
What's interesting to me too is that Sim is leading all players in First Bloods, yet it feels like, again, when it comes to the M80 matchup, he's one of the first to fall. Now, I'm saying this outside of Ascension, right? We're looking back at Challengers, we're looking back at the finals. He's definitely certainly stepped up since Ascension's begun, but again, this is not a matchup we've seen so far this tournament. Certainly not. But it's about time that we do see it after all of the benchmarks that TSM and M80 have been fed. The riveting speed that gets dealt with and again, the newness of, of, of these matchups cannot be denied when it comes to how much impact it has on performance of teams. Especially when again, TSM playing against M80 lacks in individual performance comparatively. If you have all of these crazy duelists running around that are enabled as much as Koala Noob is able to be when M80 is at its peak, then TSM is going to meet the same fate, and they have this tournament. One and two so far in matches, but like the desk said, their mechanics are all right, their team play is all right, their comms are all right. It just comes down to player by player by player yeah. moments, and TSM has been lacking in those. Let's do uh, a little bit of housekeeping. M80... Mm -hmm is flawless so far this tournament. They've won three series and they've lost zero. TSM, on the other hand, have only won one series and lost two. In order for them to have a chance to qualify, they would have to beat M80 here. Then you would have to rely on the coin flip between Reita and Galoris after this matchup tomorrow. Then you have two game versus M80, which again, it's hard to say. I think two game would have to lose there. And then the very final matchup of group stage is All Knights versus TSM. They would have to win that too. And we've been hearing everybody under the sun sing the praises of Dante. That's another incredible ask. But we're heading back into round number two and it's going in very fast Spike spray downs eight. everywhere. A proto, very calculated opening two picks. That's a site in their control. There. Sim meanwhile leading the charge to actually take the fight after Spike the fact. Planted. TSM was one of the teams that had a day off yesterday, has had that extra time to study the games that they had lost before, shake off that pressure that teams have felt, that M80 no doubt felt when they faced off against their North American opponents last year. That was their second of the three losses at Ascension 23, M80 so far undefeated. And again, against this North American second seed, M80 fans, Feel pretty comfortable walking into this matchup. Wow. BCJ somehow wins that spray war. Sim will fall, but M80 will have to take a step back after that. TSM's attack, too formidable and too quick. They will come up with a second round. It's a round one from TSM, but definitely a brutal one at that. Both teams buying up into this round, both of which only surviving with two weapons in their possession. That could very well hurt the economy over the next few rounds. Definitely unexpected from TSM to force by just like that. Curious to see what they're going to be going into with rifles into this next round. But a very important round win from TSM. They've changed up the tempo considerably. They're brute forcing into sights. And the and a Proto especially, taking those first two early picks. You removed any Sentinel capabilities. You got rid of the smokes that M80 had in their possession. It left very little in terms of sight lines that the team could use to push back in. Other than GMD smokes themselves. And... That was not to be contested with. Yeah, and that's so it had the, to be a save. Uh, that's one of the biggest things that TSM has been struggling with, a uh, proto individually at least, is his proactivity when it comes to attacking, considering his position as a sentinel. Granted, every sentinel on every team faces yeah, I was gonna that say. block. It's it's kind of a symptom of the position. But a, a proto is frontlining when it comes to these rounds has been very unique compared to some of these other teams that play for that util, play for that uh, again phased attack that you see BCJ going for with this gecko, but. When it comes to a Proto's ability to sort of, I don't know, leech off of these these attacks a little bit more uh, and, and be that outstretched arm wherever Sim isn't in particular, because he's definitely going to be the farthest out from anybody, then he's found a little more connection because uh, rest assured, a Proto's aim is probably one of the best in the lobby, let alone the tournament when it comes down to a vacuum. It's just a Proto can't be placed in a vacuum that often. He's under too much pressure. He's under too much fire. Well, I suppose so, but let's let's take this a step further, right? If a proto on the attacking side is going to be taking a lot more of these frontward charges, right? Will the response from M80 be that they recognize that and start to go for flanks more in the mid round and the late round? Or are they just going to maintain their current course? And if they do, a proto is going to find so much more value because he won't have to worry about his utility surviving. Mm -hmm. But this is the time for M80 to start making those adaptations. The recognition to see, hey, 
this cypher's playing pretty aggressive. Maybe we can get behind <laughs> them if he uh, dies pretty early. That's going to be a big alteration M80 can make and could definitely shut down this fast pace that TSM's bringing out. And so the conversation, which is not being padded whatsoever, once again will shift What's back to Kuala it once again shifts back to Kualanu playing that Yoru. I mean, uh, how, like, like, let's be honest. How how much is TSM willing to bet that M80 already isn't considering the flank strats? Kualanu is playing Yoru. Well, uh, I think they're trying to play some extra chess here. So it's like, okay, how much of a proto's util are we gonna let go to actually commit to watching for flanks like this? And how much do you think we're gonna save for the actual for for getting onto site? And how many times do you think we'll have a trap wire out at backside or out at Boba or out in market? How many times do you think we'll have that to be able to dump into the fray? It's a level of condition that I don't think M80 uh, is necessarily ready for against teams that are more fast-paced, more reliant on a Neon that TSM has historically been on Sunset. I, I don't know if I can agree with that. Like, yes, in theory I do, but when I watch Koala on this map, I don't see a ton of flanking on this defense. It's more so setting yourself up almost as if you were playing Jet on Ascent, right? Mm -hmm. You could have an Outlaw, an Op in your hands, or any rifle, take that first fight, and just immediately TP out. And if he doesn't find that first fight, right? A, a big strength that M80 has had here is that they can get these early reads to find that first fight. If Koala doesn't recognize where it's coming from, he'll just TP and rotate to the other site. Oh, yeah. I, I, he plays aggressive mid, but not so aggressive enough where I think he's going to hit those flank trips. That's but true. that it's, pistol round, he did get those kills. So. Yeah, his TP spots have been quite conservative, though. You're absolutely right about that. He's playing for the one and done, and if he can find value, which, again, he normally does, he'll he'll come in, he'll dip out, he'll go back, and he'll try to play for intel again with what util is left. You'll notice that Koala Noob is very frugal with his flashes up until, like, the very final seconds of every single round, and that is extremely intentional so that M80 refuse to give anything away on the part of the rest of their team, whether it's to sell a rotation or to sell a, a second swing. They never want to give anything more than just Koala Noob away in defenses yeah. like this um, because he's the guy that can get out by far the easiest. And to be fair, to, part of that too is just how Defense Sunset works, is that it's retake city, yep. population M80 all over. <laughs> I mean, we, we saw we saw BCJ do the same thing with his uh, with his Dizzy. He would just save it towards the end, yep. wait to find the information off of it. And that's how really early Sunset played out, if you remember, right? It was oh, yeah. like, okay, they're going to take B-Site, our unbreakable trip, somehow got broken, <laughs> we just have to get off of the Bulba <laughs> and go for a full retake. And it took teams a pretty long time to figure out a consistent way of breaking that. Aww. Aww. I heart you too. Thanks, Jimmy. I love his tattoos. His sleeve is so sick. I was just about yeah, to say right? it. Yeah, right? Yeah. The flowers? Super dope. I want to get tattoos, but I have no idea what I would do. It. I, I never know. I, I never know how... Because it, it's so committal. It's like, I really... Am I, am I gonna want to have this on my arm for the rest of my life when I have the attention span of a goldfish. Oh, I would like, do the I'm dumbest forget stuff about I this. could. Yeah. Like no. smiley faces. I'm gonna have, yeah, I'm gonna have a meme that's already old this month tattooed on my, like, on my pec. And I'll put it's... the, uh, the entire mini map of Abyss on my shoulder. <laughs> no, but what if, what if it gets reworked though? Then you're gonna oh, have even better. to- Oh, better. You know what? Just Sharpie every day. <laughs> These are the changes. You become a Valo plant. <laughs> a Valo plant window. <laughs> Look at the strats! Guys, our board is down! We can't strategize! Looking for me, Pulse Up shirt has an Abyss maybe mini map Maybe I'm able to finally play this map if I, if I tattoo it on me. Right! Thank that was the cake. other thing we were talking about, is the fact that I mean, he neglected to have um, uh, uh, Abyss in today, and, and you theorized that they're saving that for playoffs. They're keeping their playbook nice and shallow against TSM today. Yeah, I, I was expecting to see at least one kind of really wild change from M80. It, it's usual what we see from them against TSM. They throw out some weird strat, whether it be the agents they play or the maps they choose, but no, this is really safe from M80, despite them having a considerable lead, but BCJ huge to shoot down a photo. This is the test, the theory. Will there be a flank? Oh, great dogpile on top of BCJ's Dizzy. M80 is present and ready to play. It's TSM, or do we switch it over? Thrash doesn't get to decide for them. It's too detained and... No way 7 is going to save that. It's a three-piece for Koala Noob and M80 with the lead. Very... Oh, you can hear the crowd. Very <laughs> yeah, dedicated loud. thrash. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think, who was it? Emily on the desk said that, you know, it, it's easier to get into, like, the minds of the enemy players when you're on land. Ah, man. I love, I love how dynamic players can be. But, yes, early thrash came out there. Round 3 does not mean it was wasted. We're going to be seeing that thrash pretty soon from the way BCJ's been holding these early to late rounds. Very good to see.
but that was also not so much of a buy-up round. It was all pistols on M80's part, except for those who had saved into the last round. And we're just going straight back into it. Yeah, Sim is as antsy as Koalanoob is to get to killing, and he will. One down with 26 HP to go, and now some stock up and elbow. M80 will start to back out. Just against the smoke so that Sim can get finished off, but it's a bait! Skimon steps in, and it's a trade back. M80 only good for one on the lowdown, but TSM have so much overarching control of that. Spike planted. It's gonna be tough again. Koala, still with two flashes. As you mentioned, very considerable, conservative, I should say, utility, but only an outlaw on a wing tank of short corners like this. So difficult, no utility for net. Extra ballsy to hold on to this. A lot of you till the stall with your TSM as well, and it starts with the fault line, but net again early to the party, and Koala who takes a distance and gets some value out of a Guardian that's gotten picked up. Seven now letting fly a thrash of his own, but stalls out the timer until the perfect moment to grab both bodies on the remainder of M80. And TSM, it takes a little more investment, but they will cash out with a tie game. That was amazing. That was incredible from Seven. That was sick. That was awesome. Using the, using the thrash timing to wait as a deterred to push on the site. Having the call then as that timer gave zero time for M80 to defuse as they were trying to get on. Allowed just enough time to puddle them together for the slay. Huge from TSM. And that, that really goes into that individuality that needed to be double down from them today. Seven, single-handedly ulting the last two left alive and shutting down the potential of M80. Breaking this tie. Spike down. Immediate brawl in B main, which TSM has been allergic to these opening four rounds. Good reason for it. You lose a lot of collateral and some of it is out of your control. With no sim, no seven, TSM have no way of clean attack unless they barrel roll now through B site. But with no certainty of intel, they have to play a little safe, at least on the front line. Luckily, no one of is present, so DSM have the sight, and now have B main to play Keep off of a proto. Gonna stay put, try and get some open positioning outside of market with the help of the cages as M80 begins to approach Nismo, revealing himself exactly on the back sight, and boys now holding the operator. He's gonna let it go on top of a Cypher Ultimate M80 once again. Stalled away. Nismo has a lot of utils to throw at the wall here, especially at poised with that operator, and at least he'll get fielded out, but TSM still have so much more to shuffle through as the spike continues to tick down. A proto still remains alive in this 2v1, and one more shuffle should probably do it. Indeed, TSM take the lead. Great util usage from TSM at the end of that round. I was really worried. A proto had used the cyber cages early. GMD had no recharge smokes after that initial one had been dropped. You did lose poised, you didn't get that operator, but guess what? A proto was there for the swing regardless. A very likely possibility we could have seen a round one by M80 there, but great calls making sure they go for a bit of a stagnated swing. That being said though, you're completely right from before. They lost their entry ability, not having their neon at all. It's tough to get onto a site like B, when you have very little smokes and saving them for the post plant. You don't have backsite control, but M80 was playing this pretty safe. They were locking down a site and it had them forced into a retake game. And you'll never believe what happens next. What? Well, we have a little bit more of a podcast session. Oh, okay. oh yeah, that's true. No, we, now we can stretch this out. Find out after the break. Um, but I, yeah, I, I think that, I think that, Koala, again, is such a big reason why TSM doesn't want to attack up B-Site. Because he gets so much freedom to just hang out wherever in that lobby room on early engagement to play for a gamble to see if to see if he can catch a Neon or a Gecko. And again, just because TSM, you know, was able to still win that round out, it's because M80 didn't have anybody extra waiting on B-Site. If they stack that a little heavier one time, or, or they condition a little extra util to be thrown in on the pre-plant, or hey, if they win a fight, which, you know, M80 does sometimes, then that's not going to work nearly as well, especially when you don't have those openers available. So DSM probably going to continue to lean a little heavier towards A. Uh, probably, again, not really touch mid, not really touch B lobby, unless it's for a reswing or, again, an early fight that they definitely think they can win. Well, I think part of the idea, too, is 
holding the the trip wires on b-side far back to be anti-neon we've, we've seen a lot of neon yeah. so far this tournament really abuse the entryway of b-main to get on the site but just overall usually especially against american teams like tsm it's easier to retake on b-side and locking down a we've already seen from m80 has been a big struggle tsm are playing their post plants unbelievably well they had the protocol set up about exactly which utility and when they want to use it Seven's thrash on a site we saw last round the uh, the early cyber cage usage and holding down b main despite having a lack of utility very important but it looks like this time tsm want to prioritize mid Looking this though, ready for the stun to help koala push out a very important opening fight is this a repeat episode of round one? Rifles instead of pistols and Amy. Not completely kitted out. And Sim has taken space. He knew! That was perfect response from Sim. Just getting a little bit active and shutting down Koala Noob's early position. One intended to jump with the gun diff. That's where all of M80 sits. Two in the smoke up top mid. Nismo reveals himself, he's bait, but TSM has the firepower to jam through, only losing seven in the process. And now it's a mad dash through Boba to overwhelm Net and take over b site pretty easily from here. Clean round. And again, just ending this round, Net only with a Sheriff. The economy has not been going well for M80 this match. They have been bouncing between a broken buy, maybe sometimes rifles, but more often than not, it seems like their executions on this defense are relying on pistols. And yet here we are, TSM, a little slow in the beginning. They were hit with a very early thrash, and yet here they are, very healthy economy. And M80, an early timeout, very unusual for the team, definitely needed. And as they said in the interviews too, it's been a, I believe their coach said like, so far it's felt like a five out of 10 performance for the team. The, the, the only flawless team win, <laughs> winning so far group stage, by the way, that everyone on the team knows they could improve so much more. And this is one of those moments where they've been a team under a microscope going into this tournament. <laughs> Every team has watched their Vons to study them. And it makes having this super safe map pick, the same agents as before, really difficult to do something new or to catch anybody off on. on. It's so true. M80 are the big bosses of this tournament. At least they were going into it. And they have lived up to that reputation, despite the fact that, like you said, they're not playing up to their standards just yet. But you can imagine the pressure when they're aware of that, when they know what happened, when they didn't bring it all to the table before. And again, while this match is not nearly as influential as the playoff matches that M80 is literally guaranteed to have already, it would be really nice to guarantee that you're the best team in North America at the Ascension Tournament too. They couldn't do that against the Guard last year. Can they this time against TSM, a team that they've literally never lost against? Only one map this year, TSM has won against M80. Big push up towards mid, crossfire, triple one set up. Media running from Sim, this is what you're looking for if you're TSM, but BCJ, the shutdown, a little bit of overinvestment, but it's worth it for a body. But TSM, they'll use that space created by Sim to grab control of Market and see if they can field their way into b site. They can! Little guy limbos under the trap wires as TSM scurries into b site. But now come, comes the oncoming pressure from Nismo and Gang over in Market. Leading the charge is Nismo. Now two kills for himself and only trading out for one. Seven's got to get proactive. Seven is proactive and good for two. Now has to let the Thrash go early to cut short Koala Noob, who has made his way in with a dimensional drift. GMD from a distance can at least shut that back down, but Net still leaves himself standing on Spike. And Gimond, not fully cleared, waiting for the Spike. Net have to fuse just as he gets up. It's perfect timing for GMD for TSM Zippo Clutch on round seven. Unbelievable thrashes from seven again. I am loving this. The entire idea was for M80 to play against these readjustments from TSM. The crossfire, top of mid, held perfectly inside a marketplace. The we clear taking these fights. But seven once again, a 3k into the thrash, shutting down any info potential Koala could have had on GMD. And focusing on seven instead. So important to shut down any information. Keeping M80 on the back foot, anti-reclear. 
M80's goal now needs to be that TSM cannot get that spike down. That's why we see aggression out of them here. They just seem to play so aggressive. A full stack spotted, and M80's aggression will lead to one, but just one to start out, and spike TSM's stack eight. will still positively trade. And yet, M80 able to take a solid bite out of this team to begin, which means Nismo can at the very least reset and see if he can farm a little bit extra, give M80 a chance to maybe claw at this round, or even just force out something like a Rolling Thunder. That would be great. Yeah. Keep in mind, too, Nismo has that Rolling Thunder. If this can turn into a 2v2, it's certainly winnable for M80. They can pick up those rifles in A-Main if they can re-clear it, but that's a long journey for now. 2v2. Great catch Both from ults available. That. And you know where they're going. Nismo has this in the bag. Interception, but missed shots. And so the onus once again lies on net, but it's a game of catch -up. We'll have to play. Nismo gonna have to meet him at the pass as Poised and GMD run on over to A-Site via Link. Able to smoke out, fault out. GMD TP up for the high-low, and they can be fully set up for this. But as the plant goes down, Nismo lets the Rolling left. Thunder go. It's a trade-off of Breach Alts as Poised. Fire Fires planted. back to guarantee the plant, but it gives ample time for net to come back. So it's a 2v2 that M80 will win! Nismo with four kills for the round, and that is the moment that M80 were looking for. The turnaround, they needed this half to stay in it. I was so worried when that second Rolling Thunder had come out. No native information from M80. Where in the smoke those two members of TSM would be? The Rolling Thunder would delay M80 even more. Well, let's take a look again to see that timing. I mean, this early fight could have been the round right there. But a quick disengagement from Nismo, the assistant master of Ascension so far, could have turned disastrous. Really good thinking, though, from Poise to bring out the Rolling Thunder just to delay. No idea where Net could have been. It could have been a disaster, but it wasn't. M80's back on the board. Two rounds behind TSM now. Taking a very confident lead. Very momentum heavy. And now Koala has a brand new tool that he's going to try to bring out against B. He's in his bag for sure. Starting this round, he's feeling it. He wants this op to grab some action in TSM. They have to know it, but they can't necessarily Spike fight it. B. Seven is the first to step into the volcano. Who's up next? He sees the Cypher camp set up momentarily. He knows the TSM is going to at least plant some feet here. No M80. utility to break that drip. Yeah, big lean over here to B site. Preemptive. TSM can't even necessarily step in. Now they definitely can't. There's their second opener gone. Trap wire hit by poised as they enter in, and TSM has just got to go for it. A thrash launched in for good measure, and no way in hell you're winning this round, TSM. M80, lock it down. Spike still not confirmed, and kills still available for TSM. A proto with the help of a smoke is actually able to get GMD inside, and they'll continue fighting for this site before the spike to control the thrash, make sure it can't be re-upped. Xander. Spike can be re-entered, but inside the smoke, the Gimond attempts to enter. Too much presence, and now it's a 1v4. Calculated risks, but no reward this time. M80, they did the work this time, and they make it a 4-5 game. Shutting down the gecko right away from Koala Noob was gigantic. No wingman, no utility to shut down the tripwire. To an L, to a naval, I should say, sim to push in with the overdrive. Plus, having that Neon also fall and not take space backside was a big deficit for TSM, TSM not to push into this round. Now it's only one round off, and I believe this is TSM's timeout. They want to maintain this lead as much as possible. M80 have always used these timeouts so well to considerably change their game plan and start win winning it back. But with TSM, knowing full well about this, are taking attack of their own. They know they only need one, and optimally, two more rounds to have a, such a healthy half. This is a TSM that's also looking so radioactive, not just in the lobbies, which they have looked better in than I, I think in playoffs that we saw. They really have leveled up. It's just the caliber of team that they're going up against is so insane. But also their comms, they've just been a louder team lately. They've been a more excited team. They're so, so happy to be here. And they wanna let the world know. They wanna let M80 know. They are not the only North Americans here. This is not just their tournament again. And with this lead still held on to, on the attack, TSM, they want that statement piece to continue as long as possible. They'll set their sights on A here with a gun reset. Couple ults in the bank though, Sim Overdrive. Oh, man, his hands have gotta be so clammy just hovering over that key. <laughs> Early paranoia brought out. There it goes. 
be on old. Oh, what a shutdown yet again. Expectations from M80 waiting for the fast push. Huh? Okay, sure. Plenty of time, man. Plenty of time, GMD. Unfortunate. Koala Noob, another free one on the off this time around, and TSM will fizzle out on the attack this round. Not much available, but a wingman to grab his face and at least get the spikes down. M80 will storm the battlefield and take over completely. It will not be a flawless, but it'll be pretty darn close. M80 tied things up to five. Yeah, these early round reads from M80 once again, having all of Net's utility shut down the Neon right away, highlighted, shot through the double smokes, changing that pace can be so risky attacking on Sunset. There's so many angles that a Sentinel or... Maybe a very aggressive player acting as a sentinel could just shut down right away. This is off the attack timeout too. TSM were hoping for this moment to switch it up and catch M80 off guard. Didn't work. They really had hoped that M80 would stack up on B. That goes there. But yet again, M80 are putting the presence on A, leaving Net all by himself on B site and handling market. Go, go, go. Not much of a job he'll have to do this round as once again TSM looked to A at least initially. Xander gonna let that one-way smoke go. There. Stacked up with Koala Noob, looking for a way to flash with this. Instead, it'll be Nismo's flash. And now a war on two fronts. They will storm A, and Spike Seven, isolated a. in the corner with Spike in hand, will fall. An immediate detachment for TSM, and Xander presses the issue with the smoke in hand. Sim is the one saving grace, and it opens the gate for Poise to grab two. Amash to field away, but GMD takes initiative. Koala Noob will shut it back down, and it's a trade war for the ages this round. 2v2 at center stage for TSM and M80. Net, the first to the punch up top mid steps as TSM reset their sights on the outside. Net, the sight found directly before going down. And it's a 1v1 to see who takes the lead back, but a proto knows where Koala Noob is, prompting the ultimate from Koala as well. A Proto will have time to get Spike down, but Koala Noob will have space to reset. Where, oh, where is this Yoru coming from? The most imposs impossible question to answer. Decoy faulted, it's just Koala and a Proto! And now it's just a Proto! TSM 6-5! Unbelievable Last there. Time. I don't know if that was a missed decoy or if the idea was to, to fake the footsteps. It wasn't enough and a Proto didn't fall for it regardless. What a swing. It was worrisome in that 1v1. You're planting down on B. You have little info about where this Yoru could be outside of the clone. No cyber cages available. No utility other than your own positioning being a util in of itself. That was such a scrappy round from both teams. It assuredly should have been M80, but at the very end, these clutch moments getting on the site, it's been M80's weak spot on defense. And now this time TSM, they're choosing to push into B. M80 are focusing mid, their expectations are a big change up yet again. Koala's giving that info that A side is clear, but the thrash will certainly give that away. Where will that thrash go? The blockage backside does give confirmation that everyone's backed off. But how far? Net's already tried to take the space back, and just as the wingman comes in, it's a line drive set up by Net, but a frag back, and not enough of M80 is necessarily present. Huge aftershock to farm Sim away, but he's able to turn back around, get the shot down, and now TSM can take over. Nismo stands alone on site for the time being, not for long. Koala is back in the fray, but TSM stand with the advantage as so a Proto will step back and let the rest of TSM merge to A. Can they catch anybody on the run back? Nismo almost lets himself go. A Proto it's fake. lets a shot fly to sell more space. And although it's a kill, although it's a 2v2, it's a free plant for TSM. And again, where the hell are these TSM members poised? Let's let them know, and Nismo is down to a crisp of health. Look at this push up though from He's Sim. He's so far out now. Completely unknown. Full audio about where the last two of M80 are. This is a crunch of a lifetime. Nismo on two HPs. He fragged for Sim from Link and Koala Noob. Has to play from zero intel, except for this place from Sim, but it doesn't matter. A Neon can be just about anywhere. Perfect double back from TSM, and they'll take the lead heading into halftime. TSM had a day off yesterday, huh? They spent all day studying for this matchup. Wow. Absolutely speechless in the mid-round again. Disengaging from B at the perfect time. Using their teammate as bait to rotate the A site to buy just a little bit more time. And having the protocol to watch for the cross mid to see who would go by and when. All taking that individuality that the desk had said was the most important thing TSM had in their arsenal and double down on it. It's working fantastically. 
this might be the first half we've ever seen from TSM where they take the lead over M80. And yet, things are still not over. The job is not finished because M80 are about to switch to their attack half, which is classically far better on Sunset. Uh, because it's one that's not necessarily as conventional. Koala Noob's Yoru takes a backseat far too often for teams that are well conditioned with two lists. And of course, TSM will be one of the most conditioned considering they face against M80 quite frequently. But it doesn't necessarily mean that they're able to hold themselves up against it. This was the one switch in the map pool from the past two matchups of TSM and M80. TSM said, no, we don't want you to go to Lotus this time. You have beat us there too easily, too much. We'll, we will have our hard ban of your best map. You can have your hard ban of our literal home of Bind, and we'll go from there. And we went to Sunset, and TSM, they do feel pretty good naturally here on Sunset, but M80's attack, it's a terrifying one, Keg. It is a yeah. scary one. No doubt about it, very scary. And that's why I was there were so many question marks going into this matchup. Could we see a brand new map from M80 that hasn't been seen before? Mm -hmm. Could they bring back that Bind? Could they bring out the Abyss? But no. Instead, even though this has historically been all maps that M80 have thrashed TSM on, it feels like this is a veto designed for TSM to win. This is taking your final exam. How much studying have you done over the last year? And yeah, M80, their attacking side's pretty dang good on this attack. But if TSM can go 7-5 on their own attack now on the defense, I think they have a lot in their pockets that we've yet to see. Already, look at Sim's position, aiming down, waiting for this opening duel inside of mid. Nismo has his utility set up on the cross of A to take that fight. TSM's not engaging. They're waiting for M80 to make that first move themselves. This is scary. Already the cross has been made to rotate back over mid. No information's been given outside of the group swings. This is an empty site outside of elbow. That trip gets destroyed. It's going to be TSM for what could very well be either a gigantic crunch or a flank. No, they choose not to flank. This will be a head-on-head -head battle after this tripwire falls. Process of elimination. All roads lead back to A-Site, which will be breached with the destruction of the trapwire. Beautiful paranoia from GMD to slow it down, and TSM will get on site beforehand. Koala Noob, a little early to the party, though, and is able to get a decent amount of chip damage open up the site to get the spike down and TP back as the danger persists. And so TSM still have their work cut out for him. A proto able to catch Koala Noob on the run back, and now TSM have a lot more confidence stepping in. Xander smoke, no and shots on top of that. Cut TSM down to just one, and a proto on nothing has no chance against the remainder. M80 swipe back the pistol round. Handedly, what should have been a TSM round, grouped together, playing around smoke so efficiently. <laughs> and then there's Xander. Oh man. I, I'm just waiting to see the replay again. This was such great aim work. That, that, that second kill in the smoke. That was like how a spray transfer with that? the pistol. That second kill was just a spray how, into the smoke, how do you dude. Spray with a that ghost. was so goofy. That's yeah, hey, that's what I made. He does. They spray through smokes and they win rounds. You you need to have the yeah. trigger finger of a hummingbird to do that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do now if you're M80? You've won the first round handedly over eliminating TSM on site. Mid side now the move. You have the weapon advantage. Up into mid. The smoke goes down. Now, what could this be a tell for? You block off the Boba side for B. That should tell that TSM that though. this is an A attack. But M80 is waiting around. They're looking for our limbs. They're taking this slowly. That smoke is being perma. There. They're taking this yeah. play directly to TSM. And they know this is going to be perma watch. The question is, does TSM step into this? And they don't have to when a proto has the back line. Oh, but M80. Wins the fight when TSM does decide to press the button after that kill comes through. It's the only battle won this round by TSM. And M80 tie things up at 7. Don't stop fighting. I was really expecting Sim to be a little bit more aggressive in that fight there past the smoke. But even then, what do you really do when you have such a weapon advantage? 7-7. Seven to seven. M80 in that first half had a distinct score loss. And yeah, here they are now with an even game once more. Rifles for TSM. One of the most important rifle rounds of this tournament for them. 
They were so good in the first day of Ascension, but since then, slowly but surely, they haven't been able to get the wins they need. This is a battle for playoffs now for them. M80 have it all secured. Yes, on the other hand, don't. They're towards the bottom. They could be eliminated if they don't beat the unbeatable opponent. Double swing! Good amount of damage done to GMD, go, go, go. but that's all Koala has to settle for this time around. Solid starting position for TSM. And like you said, such an important game. TSM doesn't win this. Their chances at making playoffs are so fleeting. They will literally be in the bottom two of the tournament that cuts off the bottom two tomorrow. There. TSM circling the boat from Boba first as M80. Step back into the doldrums of A site, see if there's a lesser threat waiting for them. And technically there is. It's the remnants of GMD waiting to fan over the rest of TSM. The Two sets of flashes. This is triggered. Cage triggered. One on each side. We'll take over first, followed by Link. Nismo caught early. GMD was watching. And M80 will have to work on one channel. It'll be all they need, though, is no one else is holding as heavily on TSM. And M80 know that they will storm it. They will win it. Get the plant down, grab some extra time. Xander taking a front seat to this fight. Here's all the steps, all the shots that are almost hitting him. BCJ waiting with the turn back, and TSM is ready on the trigger of the paranoia. It's just net remaining, and TSM stay disciplined in the rifle round. It'll be a blacklight flawless for them to make it an 8-7 game. Yeah, losing Koala right off the rip was devastating. He didn't have any ways of getting the TP onto site or bringing out the decoy too to change things up. Not a possibility. TSM are taking these defense rounds so slowly. They're not looking to find these aggressive opening picks as nearly as much as I thought they would. But they had to be cautious. A very important opening pick. Elbow was important for them to take that fight short, but everything else was all a group effort. Now, what is the move here from M80? They have a lot of things in their arsenal they could bring out. And we've already seen the theatrics inside of mid. <laughs> yeah, what is what is the next step here for M80? How, how there's exactly, a lot they could do. Uh, yeah, there's you have uh, you have a lot of options. Uh, that's what your comp is built for. Is, is doing a lot of different things. But Sim trying to be a stopping force early on with this dash, seeing if he can grab something early. He Koala. Can't. Koala noob is taking a heavy amount of space with Nismo's help up here in Courtyard, and TSM can't really there. do much about it. And with a smoke placed up top mid, now Sim is a little more aware of how much presence there is, but Koala isolated, and Sim, the perfect player to grab that opening kill. The op can be salvaged, but nothing more, and M80 once again starting the round with four members. Man, Koala, a player that came into this tournament with an obscenely high first kill percentage, now with a first death in the last two rounds. The same exact spot M80 was in before, except this time less map space. They have to find a way to get past this corner, Chauk on A. They don't have any native info outside of BCJ's util to figure out what's going on in these corners. No hard information. This is buying time for TSM to crawl their way back to re-clear elbow and A-side itself. Oh, but the proto gone. There's no more tripwires. It's leaving it down to poised. Right, so planted. Free. No reason not to push this, but Poised will meet an early Xander first. Stepping into sight alone, trying to check back sight. Not making the same mistake again. M80 set up the fast lane, set up the wingman, and now Nismo posted up with Link with that operator. Still salvage, still value. Tossed out from Poised just to get back out from back hall as GMD makes his way up and can't find any press. Neither can poise. It's down to just seven in a 1v3. Make it a 1v2, but Nismo still with this operator and already all the util used. It's gotta be a 2v1 swarm, and that's what M80 uses to tie us back up. White where the spike plant was played out, put down just for the elbow angle, watching for the backside, prioritizing any of the players that tried to go for a very cheeky swing for the back of Brown Box. Not gonna be a possibility. A lot of games of safety here for both these teams. M80, again, has been the team to drastically alter their meta a lot when it comes to go up against TSM specifically. And yet, nothing's really changed here. M80's playing very safe, all things considered. And TSM are the ones to play more aggressive than I feel as usual. It's worked out for them, but they have to go for another tag pause 8-8 eight and eight again. This feels like a good place to do it. 
Yeah. Because purely of how influential the, the rifle rounds are on a map like Sunset, you can take it and roll with it for a good three or four a lot of the time compared to some other maps. So for them to kind of dislodge control now, pretty necessary to, to hold on to the game here. And again, it being TSM's pick, they would prefer to be proactive about it. Yeah. Big questions I have is, when the alt economy rises more to the occasion that it comes out, how will TSM utilize it? Mm -hmm. Seven's been great on the thrash. I'd love to see the neon ult from Sim come out. <laughs> That'll be huge if it's an eco. But also from M80's camp, what about Koala? Koala has the one of the best entry tools in the game, and that's going to be the Yoru ult. That'll come out soon. But with his op, he's found some impact, but he's been the first death the last two rounds. He has to take that charge. He's the duelist. And yet here he is, still taking that risk again, clearing everything out. There's most yeah. there to help out the utility off of the stun, but a proto has got the camp set up and ready. A perma smokes out. It's going to deny that op angle. Everyone else on TSM are playing this so safe and together and permit. Like they want to plant one here, and they will. Then you're going to hang out and be lobby for a moment, see if you can catch anybody straggling. Top mid smoke, they will try to sell a rotation of some kind. TSM will read that smoke as a rotation to A site. And they're correct. M80 have to do a lot of clearing first, BCJ. I'm going to use that first charge of the Dizzy, so a little bit stunted. Boys. TSM will actually get up close here. Sim, with the help of Seven, will strike and dip back out. Two for one special. That'll get him advantage. And also, Spike isolated yet again. M80 up a creek without a battle left. here, but able to take a couple isolated fights. 25 seconds to go, though. They've got to just save it. See if they can at least find GMD. Gotcha. They should go hunting here. Oh, no. They'll be able to TP ult. Grab this and just go for the plant on B site instead. GMD, big interception here. Catches Nismo's arms, but Nismo has the better wiggle. And M80 live to fight another post plant, but not very long. GMD steps into market, takes over market. Now 4v2, M80 have to shuffle through. Xander has the smoke, has the paranoia, tosses one in the market, the ladder into Boba. It doesn't one matter, so much available. Remains. M80, Xander, how do you do this every time? One smoke is all you need, and yet a proto. Once again, coming up behind the pack is the one with the off angle, the one that Xander looks away from to give TSM the ninth. Bro, Xander, man. Every time, man, every time. Never seen a complaint about this guy. I mean, he is just in a different reality. And but but Xander aside, for TSM, their utility usage has been so on point the entirety of this map. The whole crux of why the A push didn't work was because of Poise fault line. Perfect timing with the swing out from I, be I believe it was seven to secure the kills. Fault line was out, right on the choke. No chance to divvy away into elbow. Removing the spike away, forcing out Xander's ult, which by the way, he almost adds back again into the next round. Big entry this time. Hidden foe clearing coming out from Koala's ult. He's telling everybody that B site secured. But there's a problem. Look at the potential ult we could see from TSM. Seven Thrash, close to Poise for, uh, Rolling Thunder, Sim on the Overdrive. Three critical ults that just need to come out, two of which from kills. Oh, I apologize, Poise a whole lot more than I thought. But even then, a lot of critical ults. Well, Poise doesn't need a Rolling Thunder, has the ability to no. just get on high ground and take over Koala Noob. Once again, unable to go band for band in the 1v1. A TSM take over back site. That's the moment where Seven can let the Thrash go and at least take its way through lobby. Huge blind to actually make it a little harder for M80 to play for this post plant. Xander gonna have to step in for a moment and just play for time, which this util continues to do. A lot of TSM available though, and they'll take the fight to them. Sim with the Russian. That leaves space open on lobby for Seven to be able to defuse, trying to get blocked, but M80 have the firepower to continue to fight until too much time has been wasted. TSM, its remainder in GMD has to escape, and M80 escape with the half. Absolute chaos at the end. I need to see the replay. That's the entirety of the round right there. The rush in, taking things in stride, not allowing a smoke in B main or even close to B main to be the barrier for either team. Just straight up using flashes available and pushing in. That was such a great change of pace again from TSM. It's come so close. Now Poised is coming closer to getting that ult.
Although it's not available just yet. Takes is to play around these orbs. A great change of pace now on an eco round from TSM. It's the overdrive available, and M80 immediately respect it. Hiding away from this Neon, letting the juice drain. Qualanub again. Leading the pack here into B site. Keep on watching for M80's lepers. Which there no doubt are with such a big push out the gate here. But M80, understanding the proactivity that TSM Timing. need to enact on one end, go to the other. Here's the flank opportunity. Sim still standing with now a rifle in hand and some extra help. Walunu holding up the back though, net the front. And so far, T's crossed, eyes dotted. GMD assaulted by flashes. And now, Kowalanu with his second kill of the round. 2v1, post plant poised, just a ghost in hand. M80, two TPs is all they have, but they don't need much more when they have the spike in such a safe spot. 10-9, M80. You really couldn't have asked for a better eco round from TSM. Although Sim didn't find really much with his ult, the potential afterwards Finding so many kills was ginormous. And nine times out of ten, BCJ gets the spray transfer. So truly unlucky. But big still, to only have two bodies left alive on M80's front. Sure, they broke the tie. It's a matter now of seeing what the economy for TSM can look like from here on out. It's not the best in the world. We see some light shields, some guardians in play. And the aggression has taken a bit of a step back outside of marketplace. The door's gone down immediately. The door should break open and have the help of the clone. This will be a great fake to allow M80 to buy time to crunch their way up through Boba and main site. Yeah, a lot of ways that you can attack this. And in fact, they'll double back to market real quick after setting up the smoke. Going on. TSM may have a cavalcade set up at the stairs. And oh. in fact, now they do. Oh. Just as M80 is going to eke away into tiles and lean back over to A-Site, this could potentially be huge if yeah. Sim and Seven don't get the memo, but they have plenty of time <laughs> after this smoke fades away. Uh, M80, again, it takes a little bit too much time. There, uh, TSM is going to be aware of this presence. It's just a question of how much of it are they going to fight out the gate. M80 will have to spend quite a few resources. Oh no, they'll head back over to mid. Ned has been watching B-Site as well this whole time, seeing if anybody steps out. No one has so far. No one's Shadows given themselves away to that rotation. Seconds. But M80, despite this, with that plant and with uncertainty on A-Site, they'll double back left. again, seeing if they can bait TSM out. They can't. TSM again has time to intercept this, and M80 will walk into a full-on 5v5. They'll use ultimates to help them out, though, and Crash being one of them. TSM able to get a couple positions. GMD and Tenz is able to grab two for himself. Long live the king. R.I.P. Day one is already so rough without him. Seven getting the little guy on for at least half. Util is able to get spent to kill him. But so much more of TSM to kill and a smoke in your way. TSM, they will outlast and tie us back up at 10. Really interested to see what scared M80 off from pursuing top They Oba. were terrified that round. They were. The clone strat was out. GMD was pretty aware of it. Not that he knew, <laughs> but his crosshairs were right on the clone on the other side of that door the entirety of that time. But it was just a big, unusual stall from M80. The call was to back off and maybe pursue A-Site, but with the timer running out and no map clearing or info whatsoever, they were forced to double back into B-Site and push for the best. I don't know if we'll see that mid strat again. Hopefully we do, though. Looks like yeah. we'll see the beginning yeah. of it at the very least. Response from TSM, aggression, fight for Aorb. Yeah. But with no M80 around. Oh, Net, he's hiding. I think he gave the call that TSM are pushing up. This is going to be that mid strat we wanted to see. This is, yeah, this is how much they wanted to press it. Net, how much can he do here? It doesn't really matter. That's not what m 80s strategy is, and the answer is nothing. TSM can take over. Nismo oh. and Tile's going to elect not to hit this. M80 actually meets TSM halfway at Link, and an opening frag leads to now a 4v4. TSM rerouting to get to Elbow and have some solace, and that means M80 gets a free plant, but now they'll choose to extend, and Xander and BCJ each get theirs. Gimon stepping into so much of M80, and it's just not to be. A proto will save, and M80 will swipe back the lead convincingly. These rounds have gone so back and forth. This is one of the most decisive <laughs> ones we've seen in a while. 
M80's split second decision making, opting not to pursue Boba again, but instead take that mid route back to A site and fight on early for a main to catch all those defenders off guard. It was definitely a bold choice, but it works out well. And this is that difference that Desk was talking about. The strategic depth that M80 have, have been a strong suit for the team over TSM, who's used their individuality to convert so many interesting rounds off of gunfights alone. Hmm. With that being said though, M80, they had a string of rounds put together. TSM, whether it be attack or defense, their post plans have worked pretty well. They've won primarily from defuses so far this half. And I think M80's idea now is to prolong that period as long <laughs> as possible. Or should I say delay? They don't want to go for the plants right away. They want to play around with the map more mm -hmm. and catch these rotators and these mid holders off guard. Exactly. They want that post plant to become a triviality. Yeah, but let's oh see if it happens this round. Look at the stack up outside B. Nothing but pistols yeah, for seven. Up. And broken buys with rifles and guardians from others. Very rough buy indeed, and it's going to lead to TSM taking the initiative into the lobby on the swing. Sim lands his shots. Two opening on M80, and they'll storm the battlefield. Two open. TSM sweeping the floor. BCJ the only one remaining, and will take care of the rest of the crowd. But now it's a 1v2, and a proto and boys do not just have pistols. Again and again, this game continues to swing. And it will once more by the skin of its teeth, TSM. 11-11, Max make a wish. Oh, I wish for a map three if this is how both teams want to play, holy. I love this proactivity coming out from TSM. The fact that they started off in the beginning taking things so slow, but now they have the same reads that M80 themselves opted to bring out their defense. Switching things up now, playing so much more aggressive, forcing yet another tactical timeout from M80. This is a scared M80, not something you see very often. The flawless team of Ascension. They've yet to lose a series. And remember, TSM have only won one map over M80 the entirety of this year. And we could very well in two rounds see a second. So close with this pick. That again is a deviation from what TSM is normally picked up against M80. But not this tournament. TSM has started to feel a lot better on Sunset here at Ascension. And it's clear why. Sim doesn't just think he can match up against the big dogs of LATAM and Brazil. He is a big dog. He is a Sunset Neon. And not just him, it's every member of TSM who is scaring away the Crows of M80. BCJ has not been able to do anything these past few rounds other than just let Wingman go. The Util Dump War has been unabashedly in TSM's favor. Yeah. Sim taking some notes out of Dante's playbook for these opening picks too, you can definitely tell. And TSM, they, they like to stack up, similar to a lot of other teams we've seen so far in Ascension, but the core difference was always the speed. Sim would take things slower than, say, Dante, right? But, and sure, it Don't hasn't changed run. much, but he has that confidence now. The whole team does to take these fights still just He's as aggressive. Next. Seven. Blinded out. Has to run away. Spotted, pinged by Koala on the drift, and he's just gonna take this fight. Seven will oh. win it! Still flashed, still stuck in market, still M80 taking the site and a spike plant. Now Nismo attempting to engage. Seven has a thrash, but a thrash in tandem. Poised will protect the president though in TSM. All fights are won. Seven now up and running again will let his little guy go as the rest of TSM will storm Xander easily taken over. No black light flawless, but four stay standing for TSM's game point. Once again, M80 trying to change up the pace to play aggressive on their own. Koala using ult to clear sight did find seven, and even Nismo was there for the stun to ensure that the marketplace push could not be redone. And yet Koala, another first death, lost out on that fight. This is very unusual for him. This is, is always one of his more confident maps. It's true. This is this is very unlike Koala Noob. He normally wins a lot more of these matchups, and it is doing a lot to M80's chances of winning these rounds compared to having something like that Neon that can just push up with your team so much more often. Koala Noob, an ultimate, gets yet nothing this time around, and now M80 on a fractured buy 
have to use so much in the early rounds, so much more than they're used to just oh, to look clutch this. onto this map. A chance of it, at least. The double Koala trims. New. Lots set up here in the courtyard. Koala new will spot at least half of it. Yeah. M80 again taking over mid, but how far do they press it? No smoke thrown in just yet, and conditioning will lead TSM to refuse to intercept this fight to any degree just yet. So much slower on the double back from sites with a complete lack of intel. Sim, ISOed. Seven, util still available. Waiting for the back lines net, listening for audio in the rotates. Could catch them off guard on this flank, but he's playing aggressive. Already fights have begun. Seven, good for one, but net, he's the core to bring this home. Could we go to overtime? I'm not sure anymore. 3v3, Koala had to forego the operator back into the Vandal. He picked it back up again. Xander only has a Bulldog. BZJ only has a Guardian. It's slim pickings here for M80. As Koala knew on the Mosh, blinded away, has to ask for support, and Xander comes calling yet again. He answers. And M80 can clear the board, both for the round and for the game. We exit regulation overtime. once again here in Ascension. We're going to overtime. We talk about how M80 has been undefeated so far in Ascension, but a lot of the maps have come unbelievably close. This has been one of the most competitive Valorant tournaments I've ever seen in my life. And it just keeps on going. I mean, overtime now against TSM, a team transformed against M80. Years now worth of practice against them. Not much results, but this moment we're inching closer and closer to possibly seeing at least a first map won for TSM's favor. The confidence is soaring. And although that post plant wasn't the best for M80, they didn't have the best weaponry you would hope for. They were still good at clutching together and getting those multi kills into overtime. It's a matter now of seeing who's gonna change the pace up even more. And to be honest with you, dude, I mean, for how safe this matchup has been, the agent picks and the map vetoes, it's still big question marks about what the strategy will be going into round after round. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be honest with you, my eyes are now completely focused on TSM. Yeah, all eyes on the underdog. As they were all day today, the regional matchups were the one seeds who were underperforming so far came up heavy against their regional counterparts. And now, save for TSM, Ascension is once again locked competitively. So many teams clawing for those top four spots in TSM with a win here against M80, with a map even. They're just one claw closer. Oh, but look at this. Already early util usage mid, expecting Koala to push aggressively there. They're hunting for Koala, but he's outside B main. Yeah, he's still trying to look for a pickup here. So lead the smoke out from GMD. Confirmed with the flash. It's M80 again. Not step back yet. a little bit, play for this retake a little bit heavier. TSM still not fully committed, still oh, having smoke. GMD over here. Big Tenric. smoke to try to sell the mid-rotation again. Not even. It's the crunch for B that they want M80 to think is going to happen. Yeah. They're not moving, though. M80 is staying stalwart. They're waiting for this A-read. They think that TSM is bluffing. They're going to call it. They would know. And as these smokes dissipate, M80 says, well, where are you? Where could you possibly be? Nowhere else but A is the fight. TSM make the call, and M80 hear it in spades. Sim will clear the space with a slide. And so M80 have to back out left. and play for the retake in full. This retake is scary. This has oh, been TSM's charges. biggest advantage so far this map, playing in these close quarters. Xander, though, multi-kills across the board, has been a difference maker. Utility looking great, both teams. How do they approach? So many flashes for Koala and M80. And it starts with a flurry of them on either side. Sim the closest to the fight, but a pro to the first in it to get a kill. Xander Slide falls. back from Sim means you have to check more as you go in. And M80, they have so much that they're just walking into, including Sim, who from the corner of the site is a walking turret for TSM, who will clean house, keep four standing for their attacking Switching win, giving side. them game point again. And even with the macro being completely red by M80, recognizing the fake smokes from mid-site not being a crunch, 
I, I'd be curious to see if that marketplace door was closed or open because the camera outside, had it been open, would have revealed that there was never a presence in mid from TSM except mm -hmm. for the start of the round and never pushed up beyond the door of marketplace. What a great read from M80, but they lost out on the gunfights. TSM, they've been winning on individuality. Now the sides have been swapped. M80's strap book has been a lot more in depth. Not using it in mid. Initially, Xander. TSM, they've taken the fight to them. Xander falling early. TSM will scurry into mid and take over again, winning all their fights. Net, at least winning one against Poise, trying to stay put for the Dosi -si Do, but now with 2v2. Or 2v3, excuse me, and 7 with the angle to flank in. Defenders Sweep win. through, take a four-piece to end the round and give TSM the opening map of the match. What a starter pack for this underdog squad. The last three days have been poor from TSM, but this matchup is what they've been prepping for. The performance, albeit close, yes, in the OT. Helping take another map off of these undefeated Titans. TSM now a very good chance to give M80 their first loss of Ascension. One of the few kryptonites of M80 at Ascension has been the alternative American team. They were the only ones to defeat them outside of the Union in the previous year. Guard did it twice, first time in the beginning of those playoffs and at those grand finals. TSM were never lauded as a team who was going to make it that far going into this tournament. And they haven't been these past few days with teams able to continuously best them. And yet, Keg, here we stand. Anybody can win. Anybody yeah. can ascend. This, this tournament's been so competitive. I had my worries about some teams going into this, but now it's anybody's game. The hunt to find individual players against M80 and prevent them from playing the game. TSM's MO. But guess what? We have a whole lot more to come. And if this is how map number one's gonna go, imagine what number two and maybe even map number three will be like. But we gotta get there first. So don't go anywhere. We'll definitely be right back.
Space. Okay, TSM, we see you. We see what you're doing right here. They get the win against M80 on the map of Sunset, 14 to 12. And Roy, we knew that this was going to go the distance just looking at their previous maps of Sunset, both for M80 and TSM. But what a way to close it out and what a map that we just had. Yeah, and it was exactly what we talked about. So I'm starting to think that we might actually know what we're talking about, huh? Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, no, first time, <laughs> trust me. Um, but yeah, it, it was pretty fun to watch. M80 did have, I mean, at least on a, on a surface level, they did look like the more tactically deep team. They had great ideas. They had great setups. They looked more well put together in almost every stage of the round. But it did feel like TSM was just better mechanically. And that's exactly what they needed to defeat, T to defeat M80 and to dismantle a lot of their ideas and setups. I want to see more of this team and I want to see more of this TSM. We talked about the times that they phase M80 before and I mean only on this year they've only been able to take one map away from them. Now make it two after that crazy overtime that we had, Emily. I think it was so fun to watch and I hope the series continue to be this close. I think you're right. I think it's going to be this close. This just gives us a teller of how intensely close both of these teams are at the moment. And TSM here, I mean, they won an OT, 14, 12. And uh, what I saw from them really was all the players just look so strong individually. And we also saw a lot of clutches that were happening from both the Proto and GMD. But to me, when I was watching the map, um, the rounds, I felt like it came down to 2v2s and 1v1s. I mean, it was very close. It just came down to who won the battle at the end of the day. And it was constant back-to-back -back trading. It was a full-on battlefield for both teams. And I loved hearing the banter. I don't know if you, if you guys were hearing it, but the banter between the, the two teams was super fun to hear. Getting each other's heads and also let's look at the stats. So GMD, like I was saying, was coming out with some of those important clutches when 25 and 19 on the Omen and, and 7 just coming right in at second. We also saw an off, if you guys were noticing from Koala Noob on mm -hmm. the Yoru, which he was doing a good job. He was getting a pick in one angle, then he was maneuvering around and being a nuisance and really it just came down to those clutches i think but both teams played really well yeah and then to, on the tsm side as well like we talked about gmd we talked about the seven factor and both of these players did show up in this first map again it, whenever seven is having a great game it does feel like tsm's wins are a lot more convincing yes and it, it, there's so many situations and so many moments where these two players specifically and obviously everyone on tsm had their moments but these two players were more consistently finding value in both the team brawls and in, in the early fights that they were having as a team they always kept ending in the favor of tsm because these two players were popping off consistently 
Something that I really love to see about TSM is that you can tell on those close rounds how hyped up they were. You can see <laughs> yeah. the energy, you can feel the energy from these players as they were getting these clutches and these crucial rounds. And it was a nice uh, map to see everybody getting their moments, everybody being able to pop off, especially as you guys were highlighting specifically GMD and a Proto, but everybody else, Seven as well, doing his part, Sim and Poise as well. So now we're approaching the second map of Icebox where uh, I don't know if it's gonna be an MAD comeback. I think it will be though, at least for this map. This is a, the most likely match that we have to push is the distance. Looking at the history of MAD, I mean, recently, all of their matches have been closed, have gone to the mm -hmm. third map, and it's also a TSM that is fired up and ready to win, right? Absolutely, but I do wanna refresh our minds, okay? This is still, despite the very close battles they've had on this map, this is still MAD's undefeated map. They have won almost every single time they've ended up on Icebox, whether it was 13-11, whether it was 13-9, it doesn't really matter. It still is functionally their best map. And TSM, on the other hand, they've not really had that much success with the Reyna comp. Now, they both run very similar compositions, right? Double controller, Viper and Omen. The difference is M80 uses double initiators, but TSM has the Reyna, and Sim did not have a great first map. And I just want to remind everybody at home that TSM is really on a roll right now. They took on everybody and sent everybody home in the NA playoffs, and they made they really deserve their spot, and they're showing it. Every day that I watch them, I'm impressed. I think that they keep getting better and better, and they took their map pick of Sunset. But now, like Roy, like you were saying, we're on M80's map pick. I mean, they've gone 6 and one so far since Stage 2, so it's looking really strong. Uh, Roy, do you think that they're going to change their agent pool based off of what we last saw them play or no? <laughs> okay, yeah, well, hmm. I come would on, not be, come on. listen, I would not <laughs> be surprised if they did, but I think if they did, I would, a part of me would still be surprised because of the fact that there hasn't, I mean, unless they've been working on a secret comp, who knows? It's M80, who, yeah, no one can predict what they yeah. were, they're about to do, but I, a, a part of me feels like they are really strong on this map and their composition is so dynamic in its approach and it's a, kind of its ability to do things on the map. So I don't think they should swap. Yeah, mm, they should. But I mean, maybe anything can happen, even on the side of TSM and the arena that we've been seeing a couple of times, trying to find what is going to be the most successful for both of the teams, whether it's going to be the composition or in general, the ideas that they need to work around. Mm -hmm. And as we've talked about uh, to TSM, it's not just uh, it's not just winning. This match is not just about winning against M80, but it's also they need to win this match. They need to continue to win because we don't know what the rest of the scores are going to look like for the other teams to make sure that it is in their control that they make it to playoffs. They have this match against M80, which is obviously not easy, but then they have all nights that, yeah, sure, they didn't win today, but they're still very, very good. So TSM, they need to get these wins, and it would be a statement, Emily, if they're able to get it today. It was, yeah, I agree with you. They they need this because, like we've been saying, they have not won versus a BO3 series versus M80 at all this year. So this is a very important match for them because they're at LAN and everything that's at stake. It's a very, very high-pressured match for them. But right now, M80 is 3-0 in groups. So I've... You know, I was saying that I think that they don't have that much pressure. They're, they're already kind of set in stone to move forward. Whereas TSM, not only do they need this win for the revenge versus M80 to really show, hey, we're a strong team, especially in North America, but also just Americas in total. They need this win so that they can move forward in the playoffs because right now they're one and two in groups. They also want to get that respect, not only from M80, but from everybody, because mm -hmm. honestly, this TSM squad, they have been underestimated. Even when they made it to Ascension, there were a lot of people doubting them and, and questioning how far they were going to make it. And now they have a really good chance, right, to get this win. They're one in CR right now in maps against M80. They can close it out in Icebox, and yes, it's not going to be easy. M80 have a really good Icebox, but they have a chance to do so, and that is going to be uh, the message that they send to everybody who has been doubting them yeah i mean the, the people that have been doubting them is <clears throat> me um i've been doubting them and every time i doubt them <laughs> i get proven wrong 
and I, I keep a part of me just keeps want, wanting to keep doubting them. But they, <laughs> they're they're a good team. They have so many good players. They just look very brawly, and it's like it's sometimes hard to pinpoint exactly what their win conditions are. But that maybe that is the charm. Maybe they're just really good in the chaos. They're really good at maneuvering their individual skill and leveraging that in some weird dynamic that they have. And I think a part of that is their superpower. And I think I would really would love to see that on a map like Icebox, where it is a lot about you know post plans retakes and kind of individual flair anytime in between those two like two phases we've seen the different versions of tsm and honestly when this team was coming up together when all the pieces were mixing together we thought that this was going to be a passive team we thought this was going to be one of the slowest teams that we had in challengers because three of the players in the past were playing the controller the sentinel and they they were very passive but now you're seeing a lot more of a team that they consider themselves and we see it as you were saying they're broadly very mm -hmm. aggressive understanding and in working around what they know works for them they're not necessarily following what everybody else is doing what the top top tiers their teams are doing but they're finding their own style and they're making it work out absolutely right. and, that, and again i do want to touch on the fact that tsm does have reyna an agent that can get away with that so i think reyna will be an expression of sim here and he's really going to have to step up on this map to again dismantle m80 that was the win condition for tsm in the first map they kept getting in their faces they kept winning fights they kept picking them off and then the retakes that is a perfect agent to be on if you want to uh, stick to that idea well let's jump into the zippo or to the blacklight agent select rather to find out what the compositions are going to look like between these two teams if there's going to be anything new anything surprising and no emily is actually going to be tsm continuing to play this reina on that side they're confident on that composition although they haven't found the success and an m80 once again opting for this no duelist composition that we've seen in the past yeah, they're using the same comp, which I, I thought maybe they would change. Sim changed his uh, duelist that he was using on Haven already through the group, so I thought maybe he would try to go on Jet for Icebox, but that's okay. I mean, they, they're not bad with this comp. It's just they have a 33% win rate percentage with this comp <laughs> from Stage 2, so I'm a little worried for them. That's crazy. Um, but like Roy, you've been saying, uh, I've been doubting them, but they just keep proving me wrong, so who knows? They might prove everybody wrong if they're able to get away with this map win on Icebox, or let's find out if M80, they do the M80 thing and they get the win on the second map, push to the third one, and let's send it to your casters to find that out with Keck and Tenrek. Thanks so much, Dryad. Yeah, all you have to do to rocket from fifth to second in the standings here, if you're TSM, all you have to do, one simple thing. Beat M80 yeah. on Icebox. Oh, simple. Quite the yeah, prize for quite the it. price. Yeah, it's it's gonna be a, it's gonna be an uphill battle here for TSM, who has had a solidly weak icebox against M80, who has had a pretty strong icebox for let me check my watch real quick. The whole entire split. Um oh, yeah. the entire split. Uh, so this is definitely looking tough. I know we said it at the beginning of the match keg, but I'm fairly confident that M80 can take this one. Uh, I, I'm confident too, but I am a little... I'm going to dial back a little bit because most of the wins that we've seen from M80 since fight. the beginning of Split 2 have been either 13-11 wins or overtime wins. These have not been walks in the park at all for M80 so far. In fact, only two matches so far of those six have been a scoreline of 13 and a score from the enemy team of less than 10. And even that was not a low number either. But look at this though, TSM taking their sweet time. Big aggression towards mid now for M80. Haven't seen the cross back over to B just yet. Slow caravan into A site though, will give it away. And M80 are already prepared for the retake. And Nismo is circling for a moment, seeing if anybody gets a little excitable. They won't, TSM will stay respectful. Fight but plan at least one on site. Sim, who again on the Reina, has already been planted up to the back site. Like Strongleg said, not been having a, a, a shining game so far. And as Reina, you kind of have to have one. So let's see if he lights it up. It can't this time around. M80, too much of a death ball on the circle. But can they continue it? Ring around the Rosie. And Gimond is subject to all of it. Able to find two before going down. And the playing field's been evened up. Koala Noob on three measly HP will drop down into seven's grasp. And now on zero HP is Nismo as well. M80 will drop that first three take. And TSM come out with round one. It really feels like TSM, that pressure has not gotten to them about the situation they're in just yet. 
The fact now that they're fighting the team that has been yet to be defeated in Ascension. The fact that they may very well be playing for their tournament life. This was a big worry, right? Would they crumble under that pressure? The fundamentals they've worked on all year. No? No, they look great. <laughs> what a great slow round there. The push on the site, not a whole lot of utility usage, a great smoke to divide out screens, and a great way of maintaining site space without ever the threat of losing it out. Oh, where does this lineup go? Right in mid, perfect. Love that. Look orbit. at this push up though from M80. Koala, top of Nest, not even hiding himself away. This is gonna be a view call into a flash and then a big rush A main. But there's one tiny problem. There's nobody on TSM's <laughs> A main. <gasps> oh no. Oh, As I say that, there's they've about heard to me. be. Yes. We'll They're like, the that's a great advantage. idea, Ken. Tenric, Sim has a Vandal. He cannot lose this. This is big choice for TSM, bigger choice for M80. Yes, and, and in we go. Koala Noob the first on top of a flash, but not much more. M80 has to bring to the table this round. One and so TSM remain. can sweep the board. Keep four standing for round two. I was so afraid that a mistiming there off of a call or even positioning from TSM would leave them caught off guard and have Sim lose that Vandal in round number two. That would have been huge economically against TSM, but no. Very good confidence all throughout. And a lot of that was given away because I, I doubt it was on purpose, but M80, a leg sticking out from their Viper very early on, gave away the plot that the team was pushed up so aggressively. Yeah, tough misstep for M80 here is they'll once again take the front seat, this time on B lane where TSM will at least dip their toes into this round. With a gun diff still leaking, but not necessarily at the forefront of this round's conversation. TSM can do a lot of chipping, especially if they win this opening fight. The question is, do they want to take it here? Do they want to swing back over to that A site? No one's made any extra space yet. Poised has been very conservative about his stepping into mid, as has the main stacks stepping into the lane. But now that changes. In comes the swing. TSM thrives past the one way, and in comes the storm. Rest of TSM try to make their way on, but they can't completely coalesce. M80 have a little bit of extra Fight utility down. with the help. Of Koala Noob's paranoia is able to stall away seven, but Poised has finally made his lurk work and turns a 2v3 into a 2v2. Remainder of M80 coming back from Kitchen, playing for the rotation against Poised first. Gimond second, who was on seven HP, but can barely get away with this plant before getting swept away. Poised, one sight line available, one sight line available to get one kill. And that's all they'll get. But net, the only rifle left for M80's defense in this, their bonus round. Yeah, not a great economic, oh, not a great economic boost, I should say, for M80 on their first rifle, only keeping one alive. If I'm TSM for my bonus buy, that is a fantastic round. Only thing that made me a little bit nervous though was Boy's late lurk into mid, coming through well after the execution, drawing that line of fire so no one would pay attention to him. Had that timing been maybe a little bit faster, there could have been a crunch or maybe even a call for the audio to catch those uh, rotating A players off guard. Now, a little bit of a lore dump, if you will. <laughs> the last time and the only time we've seen M80 lose on this map was against a collegiate team of Blinn. That was the day M80's last player net was signed on. And so far, they've looked so much better, but with a shaky first map, you have to wonder, can that streak continue? It's been the aim that's been M80's bane so far this match. TSM has matched them mechanically, which normally just doesn't happen. There's no other way to put it. Net able to beat boys in the 1v1 though, and now M80 are stacked up, ready and waiting for this A push. The point that they'll take down the wingman on the first go in. TSM needs help with the smoke to even get the spike back, but M80 have so much firepower at this point that they'll just start spraying and praying. Not much praying needs to happen though when there's so much of TSM available to strike down. Now it's just seven though, available in a 1v literal four. Xander just in time for the flank, and M80 is the second round of the game with the Blacklight Flawless. And all M80 have had to do so far for their rifle rounds to just hold these initial choke points. I'm expecting M80 to play, uh, excuse me, TSM to play much more into mid these next few rounds to break up M80's choke. Big reason why TSM were able to convert the first few rounds was because they could break away from that choke early on and then either use their weapon advantage to push into it or play anti-retake. 
But if M80 are going to continue to get these early reads on the TSM and where they're going to opt to push into, it's going to make things more difficult. A default out now, or what could have been a default now, a split push into mid. Oh, immediate attention found right away. This is a crawl into mid site now. Dismo is going to be the maestro of this round. Does he choose to throw anything into this, or will he just check it? Or will he even be able to? TSM is a little antsy for it, and Sim oversteps B. perfectly enough for Nismo to grab everything and receive almost nothing. TSM, their gamble will not succeed, and Nismo, a couple more numbers padded this map. And no doubt the lead handed to M80. They will not fully crunch this, but it's mainly just so Nismo can get an ace, which a proto will reluctantly hand over to him. The maestro indeed, and he will conduct M80's lead. Nismo had been a little worried about his performance over the last few days, but I mean, look, not too many teams so far in Ascension have been able to achieve an ace, a perfectly made one at that. Sure, it was an economic round for TSM, but even then though, what a confidence booster for a team that did not end up winning map one. Now time out has been called by TSM, I like their adjustment playing into mid. I just wish they didn't do it on an eco round. If that's going to be their eco protocol, then they'll continue to fight for these choke points or just default and play for picks in the early round and face the same exact issue. But I feel in my heart, mid could be the answer here to break apart M80 and keep them on their toes. Absolutely. Whether it's funneling through uh, uh, under tube with the help of a Viper Orb, which as we've seen, TSM is able to get down. Um, seems like they're pretty comfortable with that rush. Just fear M80's proactivity. Or even heading up to maps uh, through mid. We've seen TSM do that a couple times on Icebox. Uh, of course, not against M80, who is able to meet them halfway most of the time. And again, that's kind of been the overarching issue here, is that M80 just has not been the five aim gods that we're used to seeing so far. They've been great but they haven't been their best. And uh, that's been the running title for, uh, according to M80, this entire tournament. Mm. Keep an eye out for those ultimates though. BCJ's Thrash, Nismo with Null Command. Can very well give up sight this round, play a little bit more differently. TSM could be expecting the initial choke. But even if Xander falls, two important retake oh, yeah. ults are available. Thrash now. To clear out the lane. Indeed, TSM will creep up a little bit farther. But that spells commitment to M80. And they'll stack up on B site, let a couple resources fly. Double orb on the impact of the lane. Crash round two and TSM find purchase. BCJ wins the angle war. TSM have to spray from on high. And they're able to overwhelm. Remaining. Net the only one remaining. After that, Null Command will not be able to last. Spike 3v1 planted. for the retake. Net, unsure of what you really do from here. Might just want to save. Of course, the Eco's looking actually really good. Never mind. Just try and get some guns. Out. I honestly boost up that ult percentage. Yeah, and get rid of some of TSM's rifles because their economy's looking dire. Tough start. Got to get rid of that nade. A lot of angles to manage here as net. But the most certain one is going to be Sims. He's got to be checking it. He's the Reyna. He's going to be doing it. Except on this one, evidently. Oh! Okay. Close. Ah. We'll give it a go. And Sim wins it. Good practice for the Reyna. Certainly needs it if he wants to cause enough of an impact for TSM to win Icebox this time around. As again, they have yet to this tournament. Um, I mean, he played this round very overly confident. Stacking up, gave the choke initially away to TSM, backed away, but chose to re-aggress and fight it before the spike would go down. Mm -hmm. No doubt a big fear left over from Sunset, where TSM won the primary amount of their rounds based in post plants, whether that be planting the spike or even just fighting off for the retakes. TSM did win their first round. They won pistol off of plants too. Look at TSM's response here though. A big teleport early on to the top of halls. Otherwise, though, split push back to A-site. The pressure on Koala, now alone with an operator, is in a tough spot. He has to back away. He doesn't have any safety net. He could rely on those double nanos for him, but those are off of his call. 
Everyone's playing down below except for a proto. Does this silence give away that Koala is offing? You have to know that he's Cover going out. gonna be that lone sentinel watching he's over set at up some the one way. And he's taking a, a step back here. Big presence on mid left. still. TSM does not have a whole lot of firepower to approach this A site. If they lose one, they have to force right Koala there. to miss here. Or just you tilt on the force to retake, but get the crunch going. But they've already put themselves a little bit here on mid. So Yimon is going to go ahead and TP over to the rest of the team. All poised will sit back and be that lurker. And it looks like M80 is still searching for. They are not convinced that there was only one man in the middle. And Net's fears will be confirmed right now. Poise steps into more than one. And he on the, he's on the runaway as the spike continues to tick away. M80 taking care of this fight and they still lose one. Now it's time to focus on the main problem. A proto, oh, a little late, unfortunate, but I don't he'll have a nice so. position. Yeah, he'll, perfect timing. he'll have a nice position for later, actually. Will he need it is the question. Can TSM hold their own? Sim can at least grab one. Koala Noob has farmed the corner on the rafters, and M80 is able to circumvent. Gimon the next to fall. Seven will have to try to waste some time so a proto can find the angle. And there it is! There's two found! That's enough for TSM to swarm and win the round. 4-3 uh -huh. now for them. Oh, the slow pace making M80 nervous. Something you almost never see from this defense. The fake smokes, the block out boiler, ensuring that to M80, this should be a mid push, but it wasn't. Not a lot of info gathering. The early parts of these rounds out of contact plays. Outside of your KO, suppressing knife, you really only have that, right? You don't have your recon bolts. You don't have a fade haunt or prowlers to work off of. And don't even say that you want to sacrifice Wingman so early for info, right? That'd be a death sentence. But instead, TSM, they have the option now to play very much into these early rounds and soak that fear into M80's mind. And these lurks too, TSM, a, pro a poised, a proto. Lurking so late are really taking advantage of the fact that M80 and these later are parts run. of a round don't have much info. They have to save it mostly for retakes. A great preemptive... Oh, okay. The double lockdown. Yeah, this is... On a. This is proactive incarnate. <laughs> Mutually oh. assured ulti. Oh, you want to talk proactive? Oh, Let's no, talk no, Koala poised. Noob. Oh, please. Poised. Please don't do it to him. Please. The wall. No, poise. Don't do it. It's not worth it. You have to wide swing this. You'd have to know. Oh, here comes GMT. Oh, Bro's got spike. spike. Oh, that's the spike. He poised. Oh, poised spots him. Heads right back. Boys will spray it down! That worked! Far too long winded a fight, left. but they'll get away with it. 30 seconds to go as TSM have to scurry through B lane. Not a fight one on mid though. And BCJ still holding it down on A site. Such a weak push from TSM up this B lane, and Xander can stop half of it. It's poised versus the world for TSM to hold on to this lead. What discipline from Koala Noob! How did he get away with so much for so long? In TSM, they found nothing anywhere else. That's heard. Suppressed. Approximation Almost discovered. Flashed. There's so much at him, and there's more to come, including Net from the lane, who should have an easy one. No! Poise the turnaround. Net flubs it, and they're gonna go for the pit. What a decision from Poise that will immediately get punished by BCJ, who is not far behind. Neither is M80. We're tied back up. My brain is cracking. In yeah, half. that was a bit of a brain fryer, man. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. Was this that round? was a little bit of a microwave round. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin, man. Okay, so not only Koala holding garage angle for eons on end, canceling the ult, bringing back the 1v1 against Poise. If he had hit that second shot against Poise, that would have been the clip of the day. But at the very end, too, the, the hero plant coming out from Poised afterwards, right? Everything was, the, the stars were aligning, but one just happened to blow up as soon as that ult had gone down. That is a valuable ult to right rid of. Yeah. This far late into a half. You won't have that safety net anymore, especially after the two lockdowns were used earlier. Uh, unsure if they're going to be able to come up in time again. And purely for response as well, it seems. So... The Ultico outside of that, M80 is now so convincingly won that.
I want to point out really quick that the yeah. small smoke was put in garage where Koala was aiming last round of the counter. <laughs> like, I don't want to go with that again. <laughs> no, thank you. And that, kids, is called conditioning. Oh, oh how about this one? Which? Koala noob! Not this time, bucko. A proto with the catch this time in mid. And he's not done looking. Net. Now the one searching. And he'll find it this time. That being said, taking a shot to the chest. Not entirely invincible. But with that conversation out of the way, no longer a KJ, TSM kind of spread their wings a little voluntarily here. Especially with the Viper's pick getting thrown up by Xander on B side. Left. Oh, Sim, great pick off. But that facilitates a crunch to B, so they'll have to fight the pit. And then I'll take a util dump here and now. They need to take down Xander, but Xander is staying in the corner. Xander is staying put for long enough for the rest of M80 to come back. TSM out of the frying pan and into the fire. It's M80's game again. And TSM are setting up these very crafty, meticulous early rounds that look like they're just about to go off without a hitch. It's like an old-fashioned cartoon. The monster of the week, right? TSM have everything set up, and it seems like they're just about to win. And then M80, just Deus Ex, bring their ways back in and save the day. Xander there with the Viper's Pit, a great cleanup. But BCJ had their number two with that slow crawl of men not to overexert himself. And here we are once again, the mid choke. Early identification, Xander, last time he pushed back, he went back to yellow right and repositioned. This time he's fully giving up, or at least or. the early B angles. He's waiting for his teammates this time. There's the first dump from TSM. Take yellow convincingly. And like you said, Xander will again knock it out. Oh, he's found out by net. Oh, he has certainly perked up the last couple rounds, hasn't he? TSM, a little bit of extra space at the beginning of B site. But can they hold it down? M80 again, so much to offer here. And it starts with BCJ's thrash. Clearing out the entirety of sight. The whole party's in lane, and M80 knows it with one Gecko ult. Couple up at the front seats. Xander just gonna hold it down for half pretty easily here. And that's the second util dump for TSM. Do they have a third in them? I think not. M80, too much from the wayside. And M80 is up by two. Oh, man. Again, another round that could have convincingly gone in TSM's favor, albeit with lesser buys. Poise fell early. The wall available for the post plant, not so much anymore. Much more aggressive. Yellow control given to M80 because of the fact, forcing TSM to play entirely in B main. At the very least, though, TSM did manage to get rid of BCJ's thrash. You won't have to worry about that critical ultimate now either. Two rounds left. Matt coming close to having that lockdown yet again could fight for the A orb. Back in mid, though, not going to be the case. Instead, TSM don't even fight for the orb. Yeah. They're well. playing a very aggressive A main style here. They want that A control. Seven has thrashed, and that will take most of Sight's info. Seems like nobody wants right to fight there. Xander just yet up lane. Oh, until he's baited out. GMD, good Sight watch. So M80, uh, they've taken the fight up here to A, though. So there's no reason for anybody to fan out. So it's a glorified 2v3 right now. TSM will be forced to engage to B, which will, of course, force M80 over there as well, and that's why TSM questioning it. And as the Toxic Orb goes up a little bit late, M80 have to question this rotation. How heavy are they committing? TSM 45. fully committing to this B lane. Or are they're they? Faking. Oh, are they going to sell? Oh, they're going to make everyone think Seven's still going for the plant. He's going to thrash. Wow. Or Does he dedicate the ult here? Go for A. That'd I think you can. You have one round left after this. You, left. Uh, especially when you have Ooh, yeah. so much else you're Monster clawing for, and you have you have Omen ult next round. Yeah, you have Omen ult next round. Hell yeah, sell this. Uh, 20 seconds though. You have to hurry. Very little information to gain, and BCJ's already on BCJ's the case. BCJ's gonna read this. Yeah, he's gonna make that he's call a, a little early. Thrash round two is not gonna find anything, especially if Ned is able to catch seven. <gasps> Yet again, left. he's late on the shots. A crucial moment to hand TSM the potential tie of the half. M80 going for the retake in a 3v4. 
with not much to offer. Koala, a smoke, and a way on. TSM, a couple things to throw at the wall, but is it enough? BCJ babysitting this wingman to get it past half. He's just gonna commit to it. It can't be sprayed down. One down, one to go. BCJ, the first tap spraying into smoke. TSM should have it handled from here. No, the hold down on the spike. Nismo gets it past. A ninja defuse for the ages to get M80 a crucial round ahead. Oh, M80 are not falling for any of TSM's tricks. They are waiting to the very last moment. They're expecting these lurks, these, these rotations at the last second now. They're not being fooled by anything. M80 have decided now in the early rounds that they're not fighting B main. They can back away and just wait to see where that plant will go. The comfortability for these retakes is back. That was the big, strong advantage that TSM had in these early rounds, but M80 have adapted. Once more, big fight yet again. No, Sim! Oh, and that's where they're going to press it. They're going to try and hold Sim down here, but there's so much more supporting him. Can M80 take this fight in its entirety? Not against GMD, at least at first. He'll be able to get good for one. Seven now circling back, and TSM have a lot more space than M80 bargained three for. 3v3. Turning this into a 3v3. TSM, wings spread. Early A attack here on a 2v1. That M80 is not as prepped for. Net is going to try and get ahead of things to get an early one here. Seven's steps are heard. Boys can take a wide angle to belt here. And Net is back just going to go for the wingman. He's not backing out of this, at least at first. Spots heads. Can't hit him, though. Well, now he does. Eight. That's eight. both of them. And the lockdown for good measure. No way a Proto's able to get this back. M80 certainly come away with their eighth round to end the half. TSM have developed so many good ideas, good but small critical mistakes that M80 are picking up on round after round. This match, this first half at the very least, is a, a VOD review paradise. Small things like identifying a leg early or a, a smidgen, pixels of a KJ turret to identify the positioning of certain players has helped both teams find so much extra added value. And I mean, at the very end there too, right? We, we saw the cross come into A site. The spike not picked up. Net didn't have to back away. He could play for the time, take two away, go for the lockdown for that final stall. But for M80, oh, okay, Tens. All right. Oh, no, oh, that's cute. He's so nice. He's such a nice guy. Yeah, Tens is Tens actually Tens actually pulled up in his Lamborghini one time to me and told oh, me yeah? and gave me a million dollars and wow. gave me CPR and saved my life. How come you never gave so, me that, any of that million? I don't know. Where's my million, Tenrec? I I spent it all on this on the Sentinels bundle, I guess. Uh, is that how much it, that, that's how much the bundle costs see, at this I point, see, right? Because okay. it's out of stock. Oh, okay, okay, okay. The 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 the, the economy on those bundles is going to skyrocket now. Now that you can't get him anymore. Well, look, I'm thinking long oh, yeah. time. Look, I'm I'm asking You're the big thinking guy long. That's your retirement here. right there. Yeah, that is. Yeah, my retirement is the Sen bundle actually. You just plant them in the ground, <laughs> have them grow to a beautiful sentinel tree. Well, now that we've farmed the biggest streamer, let's advertise to them. Thanks to Blacklight uh, for sponsoring Ascension. Um, I'm sitting in their chair right now. Their Athena really comes through, and it's like really cheap considering the quality. Um, so big thanks to them for helping us out with this uh, this event and, and so much more that Knights Arena has been helping with production on. So I have the posture of a very small little dried up shrimp. <laughs> so I love chairs like those because they make my pain in my back not you know, not considerable. So very nice for them. Thank you so much. Now, here's the issue, right? Historically speaking, M80 really good on their defense icebox. Their attack can be so-so. They do find a lot of value a lot of the time, but that doesn't mean it's always guaranteed success. Look at the stack up from TSM, already set up and ready for mid control. Not only just through kitchen, but even down below with the help of the turret, they've read into the fact M80 want this early control mid. And they'll find it. Oh, Koala Noob attempting to fire back, but poised on the off angle. And TSM get to bite off more than they thought they could chew. BCJ Spike now forced down. into a long Attack range fight and is only good for one. From there, TSM should be able to snowball. What a run Net is taking. GMD assessing that for later. Nismo actually finding poised as well. This has suddenly turned into quite the kerfuffle. Net's been vaguely lost, but his flank has been red. Oh, didn't spot oh, that gun oh. from a proto. That's got to hurt, buddy. And can't find the shots this time around. Tough window to do so. 
And so it comes back down to Nismo, who at least has been given space to take the spike, but to where? I, I, I suppose we sight. He does have options here. He does have a his couple. knife. He does yeah, have a got, flash. Yeah, you too. Yeah, man, look, at this point, all you really need to do is just fight for orb control and gain up your ult early. If you can gain this round, that'll be gigantic for the team, but in a 1v3, can't necessarily expect it, though. Keep in mind, too, two critical left. flashes available from Sim and GMD. There is a smoke available, too. An off-kilter smoke plant, though. Yeah. This one's going to want to fight for not only mid, but also kitchen control and negate away anybody from Snowman. This is good for up close. He does not want to fight far away with the ghost, and he has audio for snowman control. Here's all three from snowman. He knows that kitchen is safe. This is his angle. This is his gamble. Immediate jump up to read him as a proto. Starter damage with GMD. Paranoia into the flash drive to at least counteract, but there's so much in his way. There goes one. There goes two. There go them all, Nismo! A Zippo clutch for the star of ascension, both past and present. No way, dude. That was incredible. One flash was all that was needed. Oh, the, the clutch of the day by... by like, oh, flabbergasted. Oh, dude, M80 is pumped. Oh, I am Nismo, hear me roar. Yeah, honestly. At this point now, you have to ask yourself, okay, well, map three, huh? TSM already won map one. M80, we're a little... Not so hyped up, but now near overwhelmed double the amount of rounds that TSM have on the precipice of having the buy up into their double digits. We need four more rounds to bring things to map three. Going up. Toxin screen down. Ooh, only one sitting on A site. Time the wall here. Up. Knife comes out, poise knows to put the wall up afterwards. The call's been made to rotate back over, but M80 are playing the map just the same TSM yep. has. Poised has done they... his job and M80 expected it. Forced the wall open. Now they're all rotating in unison back to B site. There hasn't been any clearing from either team at this place just yet. M80 do not know that all of TSM have rotated to A, but they can take the guess. Look at the weapons. Nothing but pistols. Nismo won that clutch 1v3 and TSM are licking their wounds not having any buy-ups besides sheriffs into this round. They have to play together. It's the same stack from the lack of intel that the 3v1 had to go with before. That's the raw aura of M80 on Icebox. So many angles to approach, and again, like you said, with just those sheriffs, it'll come down to the blind and smoke timings. The TSM have to launch from a distance to start so much space to clear. M80 will wide swing from yellow. Koala Noob the first to step in. With the help of the Toxic Scream, they will be audience to whatever members of TSM decide to come out. Flash drive for Koala Noob to get a little bit up front. Time to go for some kills as TSM, it appears, they will solely play to die and get some extra kills along the way. M80 will follow suit and ultimately, it's a nice little cotillion at B site this round. A nice how do you do before we enter the real game that TSM need to lock in for if they want to end this 2-0. At this point now, TSM realistically have one solid rifle rif rifle round left. I'm curious to see if they are to lose this round, lose all their bodies in the process, what the buys will look like after. And that's why they go for the tack timeout. A deep think about what they can do to gain six rounds, hopefully in a row, and not tease M80 towards either their 12th match point or even overtime. I mean, after all, M80 so far, this has been one of their most distinctive Icebox matches we have seen from them this year. This has been the M80 that we were that we were looking for today. One that is not as afraid, one that is willing to, to go all in with these gambles and stacks that, again, we're so used to seeing M80 flying with, with, with such confidence. Despite such an unorthodox calming style, the way in which this team flows and connects is so different from other teams, even in North America. And it doesn't show itself too well if there's any level of dissonance with even just one player due to how chaotic that that team speak can be. But man, when everyone is locked in, when everyone is understanding of each other, everyone knows each other's intention, they look so, so beautiful.
Lay of the land once more, M80. Grouped up, ready for a site. Buys, not so great, but they have the rounds to afford it. First attempt of what could be few. Seven, first meet. Nothing doing. Toxic screen to stall it off, but M80 are just going to press the issue. BCJ good for the opener. Now they'll swarm maps. Try to take down the lone. There, they will. 4v3 from here should be trivialized. As long as M80 do everything right, which so far they look to be. High ground for Koala Noob. Good for the easy one. And from there, TSM don't look to have any answers. Too much uncertainty in the remainder, and too much certainty in the impossible position that Koala still gets to play. Nothing that TSM could do this round. And so they will acquiesce. Dismal once again, MVP of this round, forcing the save out from TSM, and even wow. then, it's only by one rifle. A great Noel command, shutting down any utility stall, prepped up by TSM. Now, that was utility. We have some uh, new agents that have come out that might be able to do something similar in the future with weapon removal. The same result could happen. M80, those rushes are unbelievable. And again, on a much lower buy, are able to pick up three rifles in the process. Two rounds away now for map three. And again, not much to write home about for the side of TSM. Spending yeah. so much on these pushes that are just not getting enough. And it, it comes from such a great... Uh, such, such great decision making from M80 on when to throw the wrench into these gears that TSM has running. Just such a great forcible shift of tempo that they've gone for, whether it's getting in front of a toxic screen that TSM have to cross, or just full on breaching one Spike that's down, been set up against them. Bond. Trading blows through the opening lobby room to get rid of BCJ on M80 and GMD on TSM, both fulcrums to their pre and post plants respectively. Keep in mind now too, no smokes for retakes on B-side for TSM. They will have to respect Xander's wall as long as he stays alive. I mean, he's watching, not, I should say specifically watching for the cross mid, no one will be there. Right there. And when everyone's already here for TSM, it's a little bit risky to still have someone this far out unless yeah. you're willing you to play a little non-committal. You'll have poised wall to deal with, so you want to push B here. 45 seconds, yeah. you have to make that decision now. Matt's gotten a little bit farther in here to see if maybe they've baited a rotation. It looks like M80 might want to go for this. And Koala does not have ult yet. Can't TP back into B for a surprise roundabout so TP. 30 plan. seconds left. Uh, okay, the Nanosaurs are already tossed in, so they only have to deal with the toxic screen. It looks like Proto read things a little too early here. He's still going to be ready with this. Sheriff can't land any shots. Unfortunate timing for him. Same for Poise, who has to wait out this mosh as the spike will very cleanly go down. And without a hitch, M80 should be able to have this retake too, to the point where TSM might question their guns again. But no, too few chances at this stage. And Nismo, caught up by a wingman, leads TSM to the potential to take this to a 3v3 if they act fast. And they will, at least as fast as possible. But Nismo, the early hold from the Raptor side. Seven and Poise though, the drop down, and suddenly we've taken over sight again. Koala Noob from the wide angle. Wastes enough time though to be able to take back over and grab three kills to end the round. M80 with eight rounds of game point here on home base. This is the M80 we were looking to see at map number one that failed to show up. And for TSM, they had mentioned when that pressure starts to amount again, it's when the fundamentals start to shake up a little bit more. But you're right, what choice did TSM had? They had to push into the post plant. They can't just keep giving it away to M80. It sets up a bad precedent. They have to fight. They have to give a change. They have to give a chance. Oh, hello. Hey. And even then, though, M80 are now only one round away from bringing things to map three. And TSM once again are taking this charge. Remember, M80 do not have a duelist. Yeah. They're all duelists in their own right. But for the roles themselves, it's only Sim. Sim has Empress available this round. Yet yeah, Sim hasn't found a lot of value on this half. Not at all. Was getting 
chaperoned for a bit there by Seven as well, seeing if they can find anything on the early push, but only Net is there. And he still will be there. Might have to stay a little bit longer if this B push doesn't work out. Gimond forcing out the thrash, and now Kowalanu with the wide swing. That Gecko ult can now be used to clear the remainder of B's front line, which is not entirely unoccupied now that I think about it. TSM is here to play, enough Thrash. so that Wingman can't get spiked down. Thrash is back, this time for 7 Sight, and since he's taken over Yellow, he feels pretty confident letting it go now to guarantee where these last two members of the initial push are. But do you swing into this, and where is Net? Poise knows! Say goodnight! to your chances of taking this 13-5, certainly if you're M80. Thrash left. unavailable, and neither is Spike. 25 to go. How do you take this fight? You just might not. You yeah. See? One more, here's more. They'll let it go. Seven, episode two of Thrash. Players. We'll get to Spike, but that's the moment where M80 has to press it, and they simply can't cut it. DSM will survive at least once. Great round from TSM again. I got scared when Gimon had fallen, and again, we were in the same exact spot. You would have to respect the Viper walls. Or at least Xander's wall in the post plant. But the double thrash is being drawn here. Could be a saving grace for realistically both of these teams. One of the best entry tools in the game, an unstoppable force for a lot of the time. Not something you have to worry about anymore. Especially on A site. Yeah. So I'm wondering now. M80, looking to pressure B and mid once more. They've been finding a lot of value, getting space onto this site. Sim found value last round. Towards the end, backing away, giving that respect to TSM. Allows them to fight back over towards A. Oh, and a proto set up and ready. Already backing away. Nismo may very well grab this A orb and no command his way in. Couple things still available here. A proto spotted his time as it came and went. Koalanu, good catch on to Poise, still looking for Sim on the flank, who is still available in TSM in the meanwhile. On site itself, win their fights as well. Keep disciplined and are able to find Nismo too. Great clean sweep onto A site that will reset M80 in more ways than one. Huge reads. I got so nervous when the spike was going down and a proto was directly on site. I thought for sure, yeah, okay, the utility's not there anymore, but the null command could certainly be triggered. Mm -hmm. And maybe now a timeout. They themselves may be starting to feel some of that pressure. I mean, look, historically, it's been kind of hard to close out Icebox at times. I think <laughs> we, we've seen plenty of instances of that, but... M80, man, you, you gotta bring this to that three, right? TSM already a map ahead. This could still be their first time eliminating M80 for the first time in their own careers. They need six more rounds to bring it to OT, and they did that for map one. That pressure's still on now for both these teams. If M80 cannot find that final clue, this puzzle piece may remain unsolved. And that pressure is so much greater for TSM, who along with that, Fifth position right now in the standings also have the worst round differential going into this match out of the cluster of teams. They have faltered by the biggest gaps. And so not only finding that first win against M80, but to be able to lessen this, if not take back over, would mean the world for their chances to scrape through and get into playoffs. Again, winning here. And you will make your way to second in the standings going into the final day of the group stage. What a skyrocket. Lose it and you're right where you were. In the weakest position in playoffs. In the most likely position to get eliminated before you can even get a word in edgewise. Yet again, just force the back away. Smoke it back. More space to be given. This lane has never been the problem, though. It's always been yellow. TSM, when they take this fight, they are far weaker. It's either here or after everything. And it looks like it'll be after everything. The screen too scary. Koala Noob! Too telepathic! An omen for omen. M80 enter the post plant with advantage. So much of it. Very early Noel Command brought out. Sim up top. Cannot flash. No utility at all, especially Poise. Viper's Pit available. Cannot even get close, and if he does, can't use any ability. 
You can't save here either. You have to push in if you're TSM. Save the first step in. That's one down, and that's the opening that TSM needs. Seven good for the next one. Koala Noob! Tough trouble getting out of dodge! And the Mosh opens up a rare window for TSM! 2v2, very little time. Poised has to protect the president. There is one! Now against Ned, but Ned can dance this angle and hold it down! M80 barely get away with it, but it'll be a 13-6 victory! We're going to map three, gamers! Oh, ho, 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 Haven, it is the IGL paradise. What an adventure for both of these teams. TSM, the Strapbook, looking a lot more in depth. They have so many things up their sleeves, but both teams struggling to close out rounds. M80 finally doing so when TSM was starting to get the ball rolling. They're the ones that put it to a stop. But it's clear this is an endurance test for M80, as have been all of the other matches. TSM, despite being the ones that these matches are scraped by against, they can still hold a candle to America's best. And they will have to going into this map three. Losing Haven could potentially completely boot them out of Ascension before they could even play their next match. M80 trying to get away with this victory to guarantee themselves that first seed going into the bracket with a limited playbook so they can still perform when they actually get there. Who knows what to expect, right? Map 3, probably not what most people were expecting to see. TSM, they have a whole world ahead of them, and we're ready to see it happen. All right, we have to go to a quick break, so don't go anywhere. We need to see this Map 3.